We are going live. We are live now. Awesome. Uh, Got my character sheet and my player's handbook open, so I'm ready to rock. Cool. Hey, so I figured out a plan uh, for what we can do. <laughs> Actually, Jaeger... <laughs> Jaeger accidentally inspired... <laughs> Give you an idea about what we ought to do. Well, uh, how do you want to do this, John? Do you want to lay down the uh, the? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's go ahead and start. Uh, I'm John Yeager. That's uh, uh, Tori Kunselman, uh, Mr. Blockleg. We uh, we've played uh, Dungeons and Dragons together for over or almost 15 years. So. Uh, Many adventures. Has it really been that yeah. long? Jesus. Nobody's watching. We all, right. we all we all met no one, so fourteen years. Um, in any case, there was uh, the adventures of Tacitus and Barnabas, where you guys, uh, in our last adventure, um, were looking for allies uh, in your fight against the Archmage Grigori, and you decided to travel to Montebank which was a large land where Tori, uh, Tori's character Tacitus was originally from, um, hoping to find some sort of uh, ally there. Uh, you had heard stories of Mephisto Doze, a... Um, friendly local lord? Huh? A friendly local lord? <laughs> a friendly local lord. Uh, yeah, also, kind of like a malignancy that had been... Uh, corrupting the countryside for over a hundred years or so. Um, I was hoping that having a Kundish leader would be a perfect ally, actually. <laughs> that was where I that was a kind of a okay. kind of a bad idea in retrospect. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but when you arrived, you ended up killing. Uh, well, you ended up parlaying with and finding the command tent of the king that was currently engaged in battle against um, Mephisto Doze, uh, and you were told of the band of the Minotaur that uh, led the frontal assault. And uh, in plying for his aid and not trusting his motives. You decided to strike down the mighty king, or really not so mighty. If you look at it, he was just kind of like a a one swing chump. Yeah, you know? he went he went down like a chump. Uh, I I prefer <laughs> to call it regicide by its you know. And regicide. It's it's uh. Sure. It, it's, in, in fairness, he was not king. He was just like a. <sighs> He was he was uh he was the get of a long line of deposed nobles in Midland, and so I yeah, reasoned that, I reasoned that yeah, in fact in fact he had no real power or clout over the people of Midland, and I wanted to I wanted to broker an alliance with Mephisto. How was I supposed to know he was demon? He was a fucking demon. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so and so and so uh, you egress. Uh, you uh, you ended up. Killing this this deposed king, this this uh, wanton noble, and uh, and then proceeded to the front lines uh, to engage with the uh, those that had uh, gotten into Mephisto Doze's interior quarters, yeah. um, and they had done some, some light damage to uh, to him, but had ultimately you caught in a moment of dramatic uh, almost death for them and. Uh, yeah, we walked in just in time for Mephisto to reveal his, uh, his fiendish nature, and he uh, transformed into a frock, and he flattered us with acid spores, and then he flew out the fucking window, the douche. Yeah. Asshole. Yeah. He, uh, he was an asshole. That's what assholes do. Um, just flatter you with their like spores and fly out the window. <laughs> um, so... You were left in the company of uh, the two uh, leaders of the, the band of the Minotaur, uh, Caliban, who wore a helm, uh, great horns on it, um, and uh, a female uh, barbarian with a, a large axe and uh, leather garments 
furs on. And a small bandolier of knives, you know. But the axe is really the uh, the, same, the central focus of her, um, her armament, and that it's a well, um, larger. It's it's, a, it's it's almost like a what would, what a normal battle axe would look like if it had been expanded. You know, it's got that large wicked curve of uh, of a single edged blade. You know. Hmm? What was her name? Viscera. Viscera. Yeah. Yeah. Caleb. Am I... Hmm? Tori? Do we might have lost Tori. Yeah, he might have gotten cut off. Well, he'll realize it soon. Well, Viscera and Caliban are have their weapons uh, in uh, up against the demon as it flies off and you guys have a, a look as Caliban looks at you and says so you killed the king huh and that's where we last left off so let's see if we can get Tory back by inviting him um, Yeah, we're going to take this place over. We're going to consolidate our power. Here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering... How did you share the game table? Um, how did I... Like, how did I... Um, it, it automatically does. When you're the host, it shares whatever you have set up. Mm-hmm. How do I host, I guess, is... I'm hosting! Um, I think you basically just have to open up game table, and then, let's see, let me... I don't remember, I haven't looked at this in a week. Did you put a password? No, I didn't. Um, what did I do? Went network, yeah, network host. And then you need your... You need to figure out your IP address. Um, and I had to do a little bit of fidgeting to make sure that my firewall wasn't blocked and my router weren't blocking the ports that it hosts on. Yeah, it looks like it's allow access to it. Sorry, Don. Uh, he didn't come back. All right, come back. So how does the um, streaming thing work? Tori is restarting his computer. Okay. Um, how does the streaming thing work? Uh, right mm -hmm. now we're just broadcasting, essentially. It's recording this and broadcasting out to the YouTube land. Oh, okay. And at the end of the session, it'll be a four-hour video that's on... Um, Online. Hmm, that's kind of cool. Uh, here we go. on his phone right now. What's up? Okay. Yes, I am on my phone right now because my computer is quite old and the wireless adapter is prone to just failing without explanation. So I have to reinitiate everything in order mm -hmm. to get it back on. Hopefully that won't distract us too much more from the rest of the game. Mm, that's okay. Oh, hopefully the phone's not too yeah, eating up too much data right now. So you were you were asking a question as you uh about uh, is uh Caliban? Am I to understand Caliban's number one and uh, Visra is number two in the band of the Minotaur? Uh yes. Okay. 
and so do we begin right where we left off last time, still standing in the uh, the embattled tower, surrounded by the band of the Minotaur and their and their lieutenants. Yeah. Right, the band, the band of the Minotaur are outside right now, and these two are inside, and he says, they killed the king, huh? Uh, he, he raises his eyebrow at you. Um, yeah, <laughs> I step forward. Yeah, so now that we've taken care of Mephisto, obviously we'll need to take quick steps to consolidate power here. I see. And what are your intentions with consolidating power? Uh, you guys could make me king. I am a son of Midland. No one will make us king as except as, ourselves. As Who much would stand as against us? Talk about the line of succession in terms of kingship, this is Caliban speaking, I mm -hmm. must insist that as a mercenary group, we get paid... And since you have killed the king, I can only assume that you are the one who shall now be paying us or instructing us on how to receive our money for this most uh, taken of castles. Absolutely. But uh, we'll need an investment from you up front. You'll have, to, uh, you'll have to go in with us on consolidating our power, getting, gaining control of this keeping castle, and aligning, I'm sure there will be other pretenders to the throne, successors to the king that we put down. If we can do those things, and certainly we would need your help to do those things, I think we can find a very prime position in our newly established little kingdom. <laughs> roll, roll, for, roll for persuasion. Uh, I have jack shit in that. <laughs> We're not exactly the most charismatic <laughs> adventurers. I think I have a higher, I think I have a higher charisma than he does by one point. <laughs> it's, it's his words. I shall give you advantage, inspiration, and you can choose to use it on yes. this roll. Yes, I'll use my inspiration to gain advantage on the roll. Or can I? Can I grant him advantage by assuming? <laughs> he doesn't need your help. Uh, That's funny. Uh, he rolls a, a natural 20. Um, Fuck yeah. Caliban um, gives a Tory your own. Um, there's a uh, shift in his eyebrows, as you can see that he uh, uh, considers your words and your, uh, your, your query, and he says, well, I guess there's ways we can help you do one or the either, um, but really, uh, it'll be difficult. Um, Absolutely. It's going to take a lot of work, and we'll definitely need both of your help and the support of your mercenary band. Well, uh, well <laughs> if you're going to try to get a lot of money right away, and you said protect yourself from other pretenders to the throne, while the king has many bands that are working for him right now, and the one that would be most insistent would be his uh, his Midland army hmm. uh, that he has uh, grown from the ranks of other nobles that have also been deposed. Um, and they're supported by the the black dogs of the king, uh, the Oprichniki, we call them. Uh, <laughs> they, I have a question. They sweep away their enemy. Uh, any case, they were made from uh, the directions of his prisons. Hmm. They, they, they could be swayed to our the cause. Um, huh? So you think they could be swayed to our cause? I feel that they would be the most difficult to sway without money. Indeed. Ooh, that's Brings up a good point. How did the king, previous king of Midland, intend to pay you guys? We can just go. Uh, we can just go steal the cash from them. Make sure that you guys get paid, and then we can work on future projects. Well, I'm sure his reign is now going to be scattered among a handful of squabbling nobles. I feel like we'll have to win by or coerce them to our side, 
and we'll, we'll need a good prime point of power to take control of first to get the others to fall in line. I also can't imagine that this keep is empty of riches. And, and Caliban, if you say that out loud, Caliban says, no, it is far from empty of riches. Yeah, I say However, that out loud. However, I don't think that all of Mephisto's minor lieutenants have been cleared out of this area. I think that if we were to necessarily delve deeper into his uh, his chambers, we would find resistance in other in other fashion. However, the the band of the Minotaur has a standing. Uh, well, for some reason, Tori is muted. Muted, and I it's because I said our guest. Uh, I can't seem to unmute him. I can turn his the video off. <laughs> Here, Tori, I'm going to eject you real fast. Join in like another minute. What does Caliban know? I asked Caliban what he knows about Mephisto's lieutenants um, and the leadership within his army, if he knows anything. Say hey, that again. I ask um, Caliban what he knows about the leadership within Mephisto's forces. If anything, no, uh, we really don't know much. Uh, Are they humans or demons? Well, this was the first. This was the first demon we've we've seen. This was the first. Uh, never seen anything of this ilk before. Uh, and I'm very surprised. Uh, surely, the the lieutenants that have served him have always been uh, creatures whose legends have grown around them. They are uh, fierce in battle and are known to kill a hundred men in a single swath. Uh, if we were to run into one of those lieutenants, uh, if they were anything like Mephisto Zod, I would, I would be certain that they were demonic, but surely... Viscera and I can can help uh, take down any demon we, we run across. The other thing is we're pretty battered right now. We're going to need to recoup in some way before we get to work. What time is there to rest right now? We have we have uh, his lieutenants that are going to be stripping this place bare of anything valuable if we don't if we don't catch them in the act, or we have a vanguard full of money guarded by Midland soldiers, and the Black Dog to worry about as well. It's true, actually. The Midland, the armies of Midland probably don't know, well, they might know that their king is dead, but they might be able to be turned to drive out Mephisto's remaining lieutenants if we can harness the energy they have right now. It's a precarious situation for us because it's like right now as it stands, the Midland Army is still the underdog in all of this from what you tell me, Caliban. Am I to understand that uh, even in Zod's absence, uh, there's a, there's a unlikely, is it unlikely that, they're, that you, your forces are going to prevail? Our forces will prevail here. But without a figurehead at their, at their helm, uh, it will dissolve quickly into chaos because of all the mercenary bands. There are people that will step up and take his place. I was trying to see myself as one of them uh, before you came along. It is my dream to, to own a kingdom one day. Well, I, uh, I, I take the, uh, out the crown of Midland and like spin it around my, fing uh, around my finger and I uh, go to him. If only somebody had a crown to the kingdom to like you know, bestow a new ruler upon the land. So well, surely that crown is is useful in um, designating authority. You know, he has the might. Um, he who has the crown can definitely pretend to be king just as much as the last noble did. But he must be accepted by the people, and I am one that is 
well loved by the commoner, but not necessarily by the noble houses. What uh, what? Who do we need to seek out to legitimize you as a ruler of Midland, Caliban? We could uh, could we seek out some type of uh, holy order that has enough influence to be able to decree a new king? Uh, certainly, there is a uh, a, a monastic order uh, dedicated to the cleric. Uh, or to the uh, the god, uh, what what pantheon are we in? By the way, we just do we, we haven't have really decided. Right? Yeah. Like, All right, well then good. Then the it's uh, in D pantheon. It's you the uh, mm-hmm. uh, the it is a cleric of the uh, the the father god, um, Ogon. Uh, that is uh, very well uh, established in terms of uh, legitimizing former rules. If you actually um, the the most legitimate power that we could find was the uh, I should have pulled this up before. Yeah, because if we could find somebody who has at least enough uh, respect amongst the common folk of Midland, then we could uh, use that as some way to declare your supremacy over the other contending warlords of the region. Yeah. I think there's... Uh, to the real person you'd have to convince of my legitimacy would be uh, King Cyripolin. The last child of Avipolos. Um, in terms of political human kingdoms, uh, he is one that that if if he could recognize me under the crown, then no other would have any trouble. There would um, be no contesting the king of the maidens' prophecy. Ha- how could we possibly convince him that you're uh, you're the you're the new rightful king in, sure. in there, this absence? Uh, if we can get if we can get the church's help, if we can somehow get their them on our side, uh, there's also the king had a daughter, a princess, um, named Charlotte, and if we could get Charlotte to marry me. Oh, she's the first stop we should make then, because w- depending on what her uh, her opinion is, then will make and break this whole this whole scheme that we're hatching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This seems like a good, but but we still need to address the immediate situation, which is buttoning down the resources that are here, either swaying or driving out Mephisto's remaining lieutenants. Mm-hmm. They are like a they are like an evil weed. If we leave any roots, they will grow again. Yeah, no doubt they'll be vying for power in his absence now. So it's settled then. The first thing that we have to do is weed out the rest of Mephisto's influence, and then we need to get the Queen's queen's uh, uh, cooperation. I think starting with those four lieutenants is probably the quickest route to get at least some of her favor. After, you know, killing her dad. That was unfortunate. <laughs> Start of our relationship, yeah. but he had it coming. He was a wussy. He was a, he could not. He was an unfit ruler for Midland. Ultimately, hopefully, she can like produce a more uh, a more uh, a capable heir to the throne. <laughs> With your help, of course, Caliban. He smiles ruefully at you. Um, of course. Uh, I. I glance over at Viscera and I see if I get any sort of emotional response out of her at mentioning that stuff. I just watch her closely, roll inside. Uh, okay. I got a, I got a uh, ten. Ten on your insight uh, is enough to kind of see that on the surface, Viscera is very, um, has been silent 
and brooding this entire conversation. Um, the longer you guys talk about making a king on the throne and making Caliban sit and marry the princess, uh, you can tell that she is getting just a little bit more and more angry uh, as, as time goes by, you know, eventually fully fully grimacing at this this idea. Um. <clears throat> I, I, I remark at her discontent, and I tell her, now is the chance to voice any problems with this plan uh, before we go forward with it, Visra. You run the, the band of the Minotaur. What is it that we can do to bring you into this? I follow the... I follow the, the orders of my captain, Caliban. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to hear, then. I hope it stays that way, As, especially since we're going to be doing some rather diff delicate dealings here in the future. You'll stand to gain from it as well. You don't have anything to worry. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have no spells left. <laughs> I'm not in fighting shape. Mm. Well, we can send in the remainder of the band of the hawk, perhaps, to drive out whatever forces remain here. But the band of the minotaur has a very uh, specific rule in treasure, and that if you find something of interest, you are allowed to keep it. We cannot put this entire keep up for grabs. Well, you did kill our only source of funding. Uh, if you don't give <clears throat> the band something, they will take... Absolutely, or they will they'll leave. be paid. But whatever is in the coffers here, we'll, we'll need to maintain control of in order to pay them, pay your men justly. Yeah, sir. Allowing it to be plundered at random will not serve us well. Yeah, where'd, uh, where'd the coffers that were initially going to be used to pay you go to? They didn't just evaporate evaporate when the king died. Certainly, he We had, won't have control over those funds, though. They had... But they had, may have control over uh, is anything in this keep. They had a binding agreement with the king before we uh, came, skated in and killed him. We had nothing to do with that initial agreement, so it's my understanding that you and every the transaction you and the king's uh, the holder of the king's estate would have been would have uh, would be to still pay you for uh, for the siege that you just concluded here in Midland. I so, would also expect money for our services. So you're suggesting that we aid you in assaulting the remainder of this tower? Yes. Yeah, and we should go and collect that money that was promised to you, because even though the king, the former king's dead, it's not like all of his wealth disappeared once he died. Hmm. Indeed. Then. So... So do we know anything about these lieutenants? Will they all be holed up in this keep, or will they be scattered throughout this? Um... Are you asking or are you asking if you know? Uh, asking Caliban. Um, we've heard reports that uh, none of the lieutenants um, were supposed to be here. Um, but hmm. the uh, the presence of demonic forces means uh, I'm not quite sure our, our our intelligence was reliable at all. Yeah. Um, however, uh, we are certain that at least one lieutenant has been fighting forces on the eastern front. Um, and that another uh, has been in the north uh, fighting the ice wars. Uh, right. Well, then I have a proposition for you then, Caliban. You should meet with the daughter of the king and uh, get her to pay all of her father's accounts while we go and take care of the remaining four lieutenants 
of uh, Mephisto. I see. We're going, we're we're going, going to need your... You can lay the groundworks for a unifying a unifying alliance and uh, that will be sealed with marriage while we take care of all the loose ends that could possibly threaten this new alliance and the new government of Midland. Mm -hmm. It would I... keep Caliban clean. I have a better idea. Uh, truly, as you are very capable, as I, as you've seen, as you've made notice or made known through your actions, I would suggest that is a great idea. I will go and court the princess, but I, I must find a way to patch things over. I will condemn you as criminals. You can take what you find here, kill lieutenants if you find them, and go on your way. Uh, oh, I get you. That way, it makes you seem like a like a, a an innocent bystander in all of this, and you're going to fix all of her problems after we blew through here like a hurricane and ruined everything. Mm hmm. And if you're, I uh, if I'm able to make this happen, you would certainly have my 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 favor. My I'd be indebted to you forever. It will be uh will be. Criminals to the entire country of Montebank, but I'm cool with that. About how about you, Barnabas? Nobody would know who we were anyway. Well, basically, we were just two dudes who bum rushed the king and then got the fuck out of there before anybody could figure out what was going on. This could work. Caliban, nods, viscera, ah, uh, reaches the brink of berserker anger, just sitting there. And <laughs> Breaks her axle on one of her columns and just yells. Rah! I can I can see it grades on her to be so deceptive, but this is a good deception because it's the nearest story to the truth that we can possibly tell. So it's just believable enough to, for for everybody else that was here to watch us kill the king and uh, watch the battle. Who watched the battle against Mephisto? Yeah. Um, yeah. And we all stand to benefit. This will work. This this could work, assuming that the queen really does is down with your with whatever it is you're trying to sell on her, Caliban. You're going to have to make the transition from warlord into politician. Are you capable of that? I have many experiences in my repertoire. I am not just some ordinary bandit captain to make my way to be a mercenary leader. I shall well, have what I think no problem in the political arena since you have dispatched what I can only have assumed was my largest obstacle to the throne. Mm -hmm. well, uh, is Viscera going to be a problem, though? I can see all of this deception and everything is, uh, is, is pushing her capabilities as a barbarian. I don't know if Viscera, she can keep up. Viscera is in my employ, and I've earned her service through combat. Mm -hmm. She will not betray me. As long as I can beat her, there is no doubt in my mind. So no, there's just the matter of escaping the tower then? Well, my understanding is that this tower has a roof. Uh, perhaps you can scale the other side if you get that out the top. Do I have enough time to take a short rest? Uh, I could give you enough time. An hour, you say? Maybe two? Uh, we'd only need ten minutes, because I just need to spam some uh, some hit die. Yeah. I'm at 16 hit points after the fight with Mephisto, so I was hanging by, I was teetering by a thread as soon as he, as soon as he fled the building. Mm-hmm. Jesse, have you been gaining spell slots back for casting divination spells and stuff like that? Uh, I haven't cast. I've been casting offensive spells. Uh -huh. But I, I can do an arcane recovery and get one third level slot back. Or no, fourth level slot, actually. 
or third and a first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seconds. Yeah. I spent six hit die and I regained thirty-eight life points. So I'm at I'm at fifty-four life. Okay. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna spend one more. I'm gonna spend I've one. I've got a couple first level spells. What'd you do, Jesse? I've got a couple first level spells. I spent spent all my arcane recovery to get a third level slot and a first level slot back. Okay. Uh, and you're gonna spend any hit dice, or you didn't get hit? I didn't get hit. Okay. That just means I gotta hit you next time. I, I cast greater invis on myself <laughs> and hit it in a corner. Uh. Okay, I go up to 57 hit dice, and I'm good to go. All right, Caliban, it's your job to woo the princess, and uh, it's our job to try and find the rest of those lieutenants before uh, before the rest of the contenders for the throne have enough time to rally around you and kill you. Indeed. All right, so we're cutting and running out of this place? Yeah. That's the Let's Caliban, Caliban motions uh, uh, a sign of uh, the Minotaur to you. You know, throws up the horns and you know, does a little. Uh, this is the too much horn, too much, too much for one hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wish you luck, Caliban. Yeah. Uh, he, he nods and he he turns on his heel and uh, goes out. Uh, his long hair flowing in the. Uh, the wind behind him, very uh, He's fabulous. Yeah, it's fabulous. Uh, the mm, the room that you're in right now is uh, covered in the the entrails and bodies of the people that you've had gone before you. Uh, Caliban takes the hallway back towards the entrance of the way you came. Uh, but you can see a uh, uh, that this castle is not set up uh, as you would uh, normally mm, set up something uh, for humans. Um, instead of uh, stairs going up, you can see a large uh, ladder um, that is made up of long, uh, almost separate sticks that, you know, make it very accessible for something like a, the Vrock to climb up as a bird. More of like an aviary, if you will. I see. It's like, um, a pr there's a back, it, there's basically a weird back door that's inaccessible by, like, a, a force of guys. They have to go up single file up and down a ladder. Mm-hmm. Are we going up and out, or down and out? We don't have any way of flying if we go up, right? Yeah, it's it's down and out, right? We're in a tower. Okay. I thought, right? Are you saying that you want to go to a basement level? It's it's up and out. Yeah, well, I mean, if we go, it's up and out. Is there is there anything we know of up there? It might be a dungeon level that could lead outside, um, but that'd be more of a sewer system. Um, have, have we seen anything? Yeah. If we if we went upwards, have, did we see anything that would function to get us back down afterwards? Because we don't have any way of flying. Well, you do have a way of flying. You just don't have a way of going. You've left Sarka and Rusty outside. You realize the band of the Minotaur is two two members stronger uh, in there uh, with them there. Mm hmm. Uh, we might be able to send them for our crows, then. Do you have any way of contacting them, wizard? Yeah, let me see the distance on message. I, uh, there's probably a range restriction on it, isn't anything. I think you're right. Yeah, 120 feet. Oh, okay. So we'd need to, uh, we need to keep building in order to get a message to them. 
Can we tap uh, Caliban on the shoulder on his way out and send a message with him? He's already gone. His, his whooshy hair made an, uh, made an exit. <laughs> <laughs> made an exit with his whooshy hair. We could, we could maybe send a message to him. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, sure. That works. Because um, he'll still be closer. Yeah. yeah. Message him and Just tell him what to do. Cantrip tell message him. and tell him, please, please deliver a message to our friend Sarka that, to send our crows up to the tower to meet us. Mm-hmm. And they can they send a reply? I just was I was looking. I forgot that. Uh, yeah, I think they have open communication. I can reply in a whisper that only you can hear. So, um, you hear uh, a uh, affirmative move. Move. <laughs> Excellent. Let's go then. Let's start climbing. Uh, yeah, I'll lead the way since uh, I have the least likely chance of uh, failing a climb check. Should we ever, should we be faced with one with difficulty? Yeah. Difficulty. Don't you have like slippers of spider climbing? Oh no, you had a potion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do we need to roll? Yeah, how do I uh, find out my IP? Wait, is there like a website? What's my IP.com? Um, yeah, that's what I use. Yeah, I have a potion of spider climb. All right, well, I'm on game table. Huh? Okay. I am I'm on, on game on. table. Okay, yeah. sweet. In the chat. Put my uh, IP. Excellent. What's the uh, what's the game table uh, that I need to join? What's the game table information that I need? Oh, oh there. Said failed to connect. Hold on, one more try. Character name. Um, what port are you on, Jaeger? Mm -hmm. Is it the default? Six eight twelve. Six eight twelve. Yeah. Hmm. I have it incorrectly. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it may be that um I'm trying to connect, but it is not. It might be him, sir. Yeah, yeah, it might be that that port is blocked. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just um, I'll just screen share then. You guys can see that. Okay. I was gonna say the other thing you could do is um save your map, send it to me, and I can host since we had it working. Sure. Yeah, sting last time. Oh, cool. This works. That's cool. Yeah. You guys climb up to the uh, the first the hex map. That's blasphemy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I like I was I was quite Are you a hex man. Cool. I, I found that you could change the grid. That I found that I started drawing in it. I was I was really enjoying the drawing experience. Uh huh. This was actually the last level <laughs> I drew, and so this is the most I would say most uh, uh not not interesting, but. Um, yeah. 
I forgot one line. Um, but you have a, uh, as you come into this first level, uh, you can see uh, murder holes um, that have been lined in the uh, areas uh, oh, right here. There's a murder hole. Right here, right here. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and there's one on this wall as well. You know, a couple yeah. of every, every so often. And uh, this room has uh, quite a few uh, weapons, uh, random uh, barrack equipment of uh, bows and uh, javelins in this room uh, that line the, uh, the walls. But nobody is here? Nobody is here. Okay. Well, uh, is there any... Were there fighting here? Hmm? Was there fighting Were they here? fighting here recently? Hmm. Yeah, was this man when, when the keep was being assaulted? There are no bodies here. It looks like the or, the band of the Minotaur okay. did not make it past the first um, the first level. Here, this room is okay. um, oddly untouched. You know, it's mm -hmm. like they didn't even need this room. It was a uh, like a final fallback point or something. Sure, exactly. Mm -hmm. Do the ladders continue up above us? Yes, they do. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I suppose that uh, Sarsha will assume that we went to the very top of the tower, so we should keep climbing. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, listen. Do we hear any noise on the from the level above us? Roll uh, perception. You can't get lower than your passive. Um, my passive is 20. Well, your passive is 20? Yeah. He's yeah. both observant and aware. You're crazy. <laughs> I'm paranoid. Yeah, you're <laughs> paranoid as hell. You hear nothing. paranoid as fuck. You see me just pause, become completely still, and cock my ear upwards. Let's go. Continue. Yeah, uh, I continue <laughs> to look away as I uh, climb to the next level in the tower. Take a glance over like the weapons and things on this floor... But does it basically just seem like a pretty straightforward um, defensive setup? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and continue on up. Ooh. Your second floor. Um, mm -hmm. You see a... The ladder continues onward, um, but is blocked by a a hatch above you. In this room, you see only a single statue. Hmm. Uh, a um, great beast with four arms, two smaller arms along its chest, and two larger arms uh, raised up. Uh, can I roll a knowledge nature to recognize the uh, the animal that this statue is made in the likeness of? This is not a Girolan statue like you saw <laughs> earlier. Um, this creature is is not. You can roll you, you, you roll nature if you'd like. Is it nature or is it arcana? Is it's it the arcana? This is the arcana. Well, I pass knowledge arcana. I'll give her a go. Do five, five. I only got a ten, so I'm not certain if I know what that thing is. I'd venture a guess and say that that's an Evistro or a Carnage Demon. Um, definitely a demonic, but um, you're, you're, that's, that's what you've got going on in your head. Like, this is definitely demonic in origin. Mm. It has that kind of um, 
otherworldly stone to it. You can see its eyes have uh, gems, otherworldly gems that have been placed in them. Mm. Um, I cast Detect Magic as a ritual, so it takes ten minutes. As a ritual? Yeah, so it takes ten minutes to cast. So I begin to detect magic. Well, sure. yeah, shall I? You, I'm guessing that you uh, start your ritual by putting some sand in a small circle around the statue. You know, something that, you know, ritual, you know, I don't know how you ritualize. But you begin your preparation for the ten-minute ritual. Mm-hmm. And as you get close and closer, um, we'll say... Your your person's, you know, doing your your thing. Uh, the stone statue's eyes glow um, with an inner fire, and uh, hmm. they, you continue your ritual. I pause and glance over at Tacitus. Should I stop? Should we just move on away from this thing? Well, uh, the the statue we obviously have to interact with in order to open the porthole above us, right? I'm I'm looking at the at what's taking place in front of me, and that's kind of what I'm gathering. Sure, Barnabas. Um, you also notice um, bits of writing at its base. Um, The oh, no, is it working? Mm hmm Okay. We back? Mm-hmm. Cool. What well, you were about to describe the writing on the statue. Yes. The writing looks to be in scratches. Hmm. Um almost like it's been clawed in in a um very archaic form, you know, scratches. But still discernible as you know, sentence patterns and characters. Do either of you speak abyssal? Neither of us. I don't, certainly. Do I speak what? Abyssal? No, I have a kernel, but not a abyssal. Okay. Yeah, I've infernal, but not abyssal. Okay. So you speak the language of devils, but not the language of demons? Is that yeah. what I'm supposed to understand? Hmm. It's too bad we're not dealing with devils. <laughs> Um, you continue your ritual, uh, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Uh, hmm. I could also cast Comprehend Languages as a ritual and then read it. Hmm. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, let's do that. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Before I continue detecting magic on this thing, let's read the words. Yeah, step back, just a safe distance. <laughs> Cast comprehend languages. Mm -hmm. You uh, you do your ritual and cast comprehend languages. Um, the abyssal appears before you, and the um, the abyssal reads um, that it very. Uh, uh, unforgiving terms that the guardian uh, before you is uh, frozen in service and that those not bearing the mark of Mephisto uh, cannot pass. Um, While do I know would mark? There. Hmm? Can I roll like knowledge or arcana if you know, like an actual magical thing or just a literal inscription? Um, it is a. It is a literal inscription. You wouldn't be able to tell about tech magic, I guess. Um, have we seen anything, any uh, markings that we we might identify as that? No. Uh, let's see. Either on Mephisto's person or on any of the equipment in this building. Um, roll, uh, roll intelligence. Maybe you maybe you might have noticed something while you were fighting the fist of the May I roll as well? I got a fifteen. Fifteen? Are there windows to this floor? No windows on this floor. How thick do I think believe the walls are? Um, how thick do you believe the walls are? Yeah. Uh, the walls are at least uh, five foot thick. Hmm. Solid stone. So, yeah. Um, the light that comes in from the bottom, the hole beneath you provides like this eerie kind of play of shadows on the statue as you guys walk around the room. <clears throat> uh, the uh, you remember a um, mark on the rock's forehead that mm. caught your eye. It was uh, etched in as a you know, an upside down pentagram on his forehead. Um, okay. Um, I pulled out like a piece of charcoal from my component's bag and, and redraw the sigil on both of our foreheads. Which is totally not creepy. <laughs> it's okay. I'm fine with it. Just gotta... I'm translating aloud for Tacitus' benefit. It's like, let's try this. Keep your sword hand ready, though, just in case. Draw it on our foreheads, and are there is there any inscription up around the porthole above us, or just around the statue? Just around the statue. Um, after drawing the inscription on a on a, on us, I um. Oh God, Tori! Just walk up to up the ladder to the porthole above us. Or, or okay. Tori. 
and exactly. just kind of experimentally push on it. You draw, you draw these arcade marks on your head. Victoria's got his. <laughs> uh, and uh, you push the 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 block of the porthole above you. Your hand makes contact, and you can feel an arcane um, pulse. Uh, looks like he's given you one now too, Jesse. <laughs> looks you've given that to yourself. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, 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 Jesse did that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. I realized, oh my god, we actually can do this with the Google app. So <laughs> <laughs> now we're marked. Now we're both marked by Mephisto. We're so cool. <laughs> That's great. Um, you feel the surge of an arcane ward as you touch the um, ceiling, and it, and it kind of like uh, pulses, and it, it looks for the mark on you. Uh, unfortunately, the mark is an arcane artifice that would, in fact, put the brand on you uh, in a way, but... Not just drawing it on your forehead is going to suffice. It's like you're running a disguise kit against a, uh, a retina I scanner. See. I you see. Know. It's a magic mark. It's the same shape, right. that, uh, that it, but it's a specific It's a specific arcane input that it, the mechanism's searching for. Right. But as you as it fails to, to find the, the arcane mark, the, the floor underneath you seals with a <laughs> porthole as well. <laughs> well fuck. Now there's no light coming from below. The only light that you can see in the room now are the two gemstone eyes of the large demonic forearm statue. Um, and you can hear a stone begins to break. <laughs> As the statue breaks from its base, do uh, do I have enough time to light a torch? Roll initiative. Um, quick, quite well. I'll go ahead and roll initiative. Twenty-two. Seventeen. Okay. Um. Was there anything made of wood in this room? This room was made of stone. Much stone. Are there any wooden objects? Any um, unlit um, torches on the walls? The no, ladder that I'm standing the, on? The ladder was made of metal. No, I don't think there's any wood in this room. I mean, it was, it was interesting, because of a lack of pogs on the game environment thing, mm -hmm. I literally couldn't mm -hmm. put anything in it, so I just made it as bare as I could. It was very, it was very interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was about that way. <laughs> I was like, no, I, actually, there's nothing in this room but this statue. Um, whose turn is it now? It's my uh, turn, I assume. I did not rule really you. Mm. Okay. Uh, it looks um, like it's going to be Jessica's turn. Part okay, of this. so I'm up on a ladder. How how high up am I on the ladder? How tall is the room? The room is uh, at least ten foot tall. Okay. Um, I'll take a move action to pull a torch out of my pack and okay. take a. Attack action to cast Firebolt at my own torch to ignite it quickly. Okay. Uh, possess light? Oh no, you don't. I do not have light. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is my makeshift answer. This is makeshift light spell right here. <laughs> <laughs> With your makeshift light, plus fireball. Your, your torch <clears throat> burst into flames, and you, uh, you watch, you can see now that the statue has uh, come alive and is breaking forth uh, 
uh, with feet made of, of solid abyssal stone and gems that are otherworldly that glow. Um, and it is coming forward with all four of its arms to, to pulverize you. Fuck. <clears throat> Don't worry. Uh, I dash in between Barnabas and the, uh, the, uh, the abyssal statue. Uh, that's my movement. I'm going to cast a blade ward on myself and then make a bonus attack against him, slashing at him with my with my magic sword uh, glittering in the torchlight as I slash at him. Okay. Roll an attack. I miss. Your, uh, your blade is caught by one of the two smaller hands and is thrown aside uh, mm -hmm. as you... As you miss. Mm -hmm. he, did he disarm me? No, no. It's I, was, just... I was gravely concerned for a moment, like, eep! <laughs> no, it's just... It's, it's... And then we were both pummeled into little <laughs> blood like, puddles. Like, <laughs> <on the floor. laughs> like, oh, okay, I'm out of ideas! <laughs> okay, that's it for my turn. Do your oh. worst, demon. It rolls a natural one as it tries to slam into you and just misses completely and <laughs> blows into one of the walls instead. Mm -hmm. Just step casually aside. Yeah. I get ready to settle in for a, a long sword fight. So stone and dust uh, kind of uh, rains in the room and you can kind of see it uh, fumble around trying to, to make a second attack, uh, but instead it, it continues its assault on... Uh, the wall, because it's natural one, it's it's just going to lose its second multi-attack, essentially. <laughs> As you, uh, just a, um, dodge and weave under its, its uh, brutal uh, but off-balanced attacks. Mm-hmm. Can you go back to me? And it goes back to you. All right, I'll... Uh... Use my third level spell slot. Is Tassadit it? It's just five feet in front of me? Uh, let's look at the map. Um, screen share. I can't, uh, I'm going to do and is there anything in the room that I can use to co for cover or to get myself out of the way? So this is the room you're in right now. Uh, I'm guessing that the statue has moved to here. TK's tab. So put this in here. Here. And we have a desk card here. Yeah. Um, then I will move whatever that is, five or ten feet behind Tacitus, use my third level spell slot and cast haste on him. Oh, fuck yeah! Okay. Is haste concentration? And then... Or is it just a single? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. Uh, I believe it requires concentration. I'll check it. And then retreat into that far corner so that uh, the creature would have to go all the way around Tacitus to get to me. Right, right here or right that, here? done. Like I had yeah, right where here. you said. Right here. Back all the way in the corner. Okay. Um, Tacitus? Uh, okay, my understanding of extra attack is anytime I, make, I use the attack action, I may make a second attack. So by my, by my math, that's four attacks this round, right? Uh, let me just read the haste. The haste gives you another standard action, right? It gives you another action. Another action, yeah. So if you use the attack action with your extra attack, and then you use your attack action with an extra attack, unless it says you get a bonus action, but I don't think it says that. It's not part of a bonus action, yeah. Right. So you would get you would get four attacks. Uh, that's sweet. Uh, um, first, it says one. It says specifically one weapon attack only. Oh, okay. Yeah, but so I only get one weapon, one extra and plus weapon attack. Mm -hmm. 
and it does require concentration. Actions. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to do some razzle dazzle this turn. So check this shit out. I'm going to begin by making two expert attacks with my longsword using extra attack as my normal action. Okay. I get a uh, I get a fourteen and a twenty-three. A fourteen misses. Okay. Twenty-three so hits. Slash him once with the long sword. Mm -hmm. I do a uh, five. Let's see, six plus four is so I do ten points of damage with the magic long sword. Mm -hmm. And then I cast blade ward on myself. Right earlier. Yeah. Is that that's that's off? my that's my haste action? Oh wait, I can't cast with it. Damn it! Right. You can can you use your extra attack bonus action for your war casting with Eldritch Blast or the Eldritch person? No, it doesn't work that way. But uh, but uh, I will just make another attack with my long sword. Because mm -hmm. I, I can do it a different way. So I'm, so first I begin with extra attack. Then I'm going to do a haste attack with my longsword. Okay. I got a 19 plus 7 is 26. 26 will hit. I slash him for another 11 points of damage. Okay. And then I action surge. Now I cast blade board. Okay. And then I take my bonus action, slashing at him an additional so, uh, you've time. Taken, you've taken three attacks already, and you've cast Black Blade Ward. Yeah, I, well, I went uh, I went normal action, two attacks. Right. Then haste action, right. third attack. Then action surge, Blade Ward. And then bonus action, final attack. Well, it's your bonus action from... It's from War Magic because I uh, cast. I thought, that, I thought you found out that that's not how it worked. Uh, n no, that that's exactly how it works. When I use my action to cast a spell, then I get a bonus attack. Oh, uh, it's very complicated. It took me a long time to finally figure out how this works, but this is legitimate. It's two attacks, haste, action surge, bonus action. I see. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna lay into him yet again, and I get twenty two. All right, that hits. And I slash him a third time for nine points of damage. So ten, followed by eleven. Ten, eleven, nine. nine. You do thirty damage in this turn, and you yeah. take a big swath of kachunk, kachunk, kachunk. Ah. Uh, <laughs> And you, you perforate and um, break off large chunks of, of this uh, statue. Mm -hmm. And it turns its head towards you and then mechanically turns its body towards you uh, to lay into you with a slam attack. Um, hopefully less uh, unbalanced than last time. Oh, about one <laughs> less unbalanced. <laughs> You can't touch this statue. Uh, and it and it makes a, a large sweeping attack and then uh, makes a counterattack with one of its other two slightly stronger arms, uh, but only gets a 15. So. Still unable to hit me. Oh, wow, it has a plus 10 to hit. This thing's no <laughs> no slouch. Um, That's really... Jesse. My turn? Um, I am going to... So the room's pretty bare. There's not much more I can do to hide myself. Right. Okay. I'm going to cast Magic Missile from the back row here. Okay. You're going to... That's a level one spell? Yeah. And okay. casting it at level one. 3d4 plus 3? Yeah. 14. Whoa! Well, almost a maximum Magic Missile. 
Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, your your magic missile surges across and hits the uh, the statue full on in the chest, and you see sparks of this obsidian flint crap fly off of it uh, as it's made of an abyssal kind of diorite, um, uh, and you blow a hole through uh, through its shoulder. Um, Ooh, it's still ticking though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to begin by casting Blade Ward again. Then I'm going to take my ha haste action and then a single bonus action. So I'm making two attacks on him this round after I cast Blade Ward. Okay. One miss in 122. Hit. Hack into him again for 10 points of damage and I end my turn. Uh, you're, you're, you're doling out a pretty consistent wave of damage on this thing. Yeah. Um, and it's surprising to see that it still comes at you like the Terminator. It's unstopped by your, your relentless assault. It, it uh, is a construct, correct? It doesn't have any kind of, like, anatomy or anything. Uh, correct. It is a construct. It is a, it is a stone golem. Yeah. Reduced to we'll rubble. roll an attack on you, and that is going to be hurting. Oh, balls. Lucky, lucky, lucky re-roll, please. <laughs> lucky re-roll. Oh, wait, I don't have any lucky re-rolls left. I'm sorry. <laughs> I burned them all last session. They're all gone. Oh, no. Yeah, I used all my poor tent shit, too. <laughs> you critted the shit out of me. Oh, no. <laughs> please well, stay standing. Blade, that's, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Hey, fortunately, I cast Blade Ward in the previous turn, so it's half yeah. damage. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's... it's. Um. <laughs> oh, balls. That I was good. Oh, my God. I rolled twice, but it was 30 the first time. So you take 15 damage. Thank uh, God. Let's... Unless the second one hits you as well. Uh, he rolled a 22 on the second hit. 22 hits. Yeah. You have two so, plus two to AC from haste? Uh, my armor class is now 21 with haste. Um, but that's okay, Blade Ward. Does Blade Ward operate against both attacks because it's until the end of your next turn? Yeah. So okay. Until the end of the next turn. So you take a total of 13 damage from the second one. Okay. You round down in the player's favor. I'm at 29 life, and I end my turn. Mm-hmm. Um, Jesse. Sorry. I'm going to blast him in the face with another magic missile. Okay. 10 points of damage. Mm-hmm. TK. Alrighty. I'm going to second wind as a bonus action. Oops. So I healed nine plus eight. I healed seventeen life. Seventeen life, you heal. Okay. Up to forty-six life, and then I'm going to extra attack plus haste attack for three attacks on him. No blade ward this turn. Okay. That's sensible. Uh, I miss, miss, hit. Okay. I did 13 points of damage to him, and I end my turn. Uh, you guys have done a total of... Okay. Um... It is the Foul Automaton's turn now. Yeah, the uh, the foul automaton 
Um, his eyes glow bright in the torchlight, and you can see a, uh, a gaze that just kind of uh, radiates out towards the both of you. Uh, actually, I guess just towards... Just towards you, Tori. All right. You have to make a DC 17 will save against this magic. Ooh. Oh. It's going to be bad. Uh, will save plus two. I got 12. Fail. You are now slowed. Burn. You reactions. Your speed is halved, and it can't make more than one attack on its turn. Yeah. And so, Does that cancel the effect of haste? Yeah, I feel like he would be normal now. Yeah, so it's, it cancels yeah, out the haste, so I have the normal, my normal move, back to normal movement. That Which makes I believe also makes you exhausted for a turn. Oh, right, because there's a negative effect to haste. Um, yeah, for one turn, you can't move or take actions. Okay. So you, when haste ends. You are exhausted. Bummer. Uh, it's going to um, move here. I can't take reactions. Although well, slow doesn't say walk right past. Doesn't say that it cancels haste. No, it, do, it doesn't say it cancels haste. We can either play it that it cancels haste, or we can play it that it adds additional effects. I think it makes sense that they cancel each other out because how can you be slowed and hasted at the same time? Yeah, that's what I. That's yeah. what I. Think. Realistically, I mean, the happy medium would be to say that the exhaustion doesn't apply and it just neutralizes the effects of haste. Sure. I think I think the easiest way is to say that it neutralizes taste. Mm-hmm. Okay. Slow slow should neutralize taste. Alright, is it good. Yeah it does. Um whose turn is it? Um it is your turn. Your turn. creatures. It uh, the creature slowed you and then moved and then now it's your turn, Jesse. Uh, uh, I'm corner, huh? I'll move one square out down um, Tacitus' direction. Okay. And then steal myself for getting charged in the face. Um, and magic missile it one more time before it's up on me. Are you down to zero magic missiles now? Uh, I've got one more after this. Alright, roll your magic missile. Eight points of damage. All right. The uh, Tori, you're exhausted for one round. I I huff and wheeze as the haste spell wears off. Yeah, you you feel every uh, tendon in your body feel strained and just tired, exhausted as as you make to to even move as is a challenge, and the stone golem. Uh, Makes a an attack on you as he runs past to, to make an attack on Jesse as well. Uh, can I make an attack roll against him because uh, because I am not affected by slows? Uh... How long is he exhausted? Just one round. Where I can't take his next turn. Yeah, until after its next turn. Until after its next turn, okay. So yeah, you can make a reaction. So I assume that means. So I, I'll make a reaction and I will uh, try to chop, chop him. I got a twenty-three or twenty-one. That'll hit. Hits. Take that fiend. I do eight points of damage. Uh. 
it rolls a 16 on you and runs past to get to Barnabas. Uh, <laughs> Please don't need my glasses. It's a 28 on Barnabas. Ooh. It hits me. Not in the face. Not in the face. You wouldn't hit a man with glasses. <laughs> oh, you hit a man with glasses. Oh, my. Why is it that high? <laughs> yeah, you put in one I explode into a oh, fine oh, mist of mud. <laughs> <laughs> which just coats the wall behind me. Uh, apparently, it's, the modifier is not plus 106, it's just plus 6. So it is a. Well, no, I'm 14. 14, 14 damage? damage? Yeah. Okay. Breaks my nose. <laughs> uh. At least you're still conscious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your turn, Jesse. Um, total do total defense. Pick yourself. And do. Uh, do I want? I could. I could disengage. I don't really want to stand toe to toe with this thing. Disengage it to the corner. Or the thing is, disengaging is not going to help me until Tori at least threatens it again. Um, I think I'll stand toe to toe with it for. Him. Oh no, I can't do that. Either. Correct me if, if I'm wrong. Does the rule allow you to disengage to over here? Yeah. Yeah. Over here? Yeah, or like behind Tacitus. But the thing is, it could just run around him and punch me in the face again. Uh -huh. Well, I'll get to act before after you go. So. Oh, that's true, and then it would have to... Yeah, so I'll disengage to, like, a hex away on the other side of Tacitus. Um, I, don't know. I thought, you could, I thought you could disengage to right outside its threatened area. Is that right? Oh, I thought it was the disengagement you didn't provoke a tax opportunity for. Yeah, I thought disengage was an action, and then you could move your normal distance. Yeah, that's correct. So I get 30 feet of movement that doesn't provoke, I think. Disengage. Your movement doesn't provoke a tax opportunity for the rest of the turn. So I get 30 feet of non-provoking movement. Um, and I'll put myself two more hexes away from it. Put There's Tacitus no... between me and him. Oh, I see. But that's all you can do with your action. Correct. Yeah, it's like a standard action. So here or here? Actually, one more to the right. There you go. Now? Or right there. One more left. There. Yeah. Okay. okay. And I'm done. All right. Tacitus. You're All right. feeling more normal. Yeah, I, uh, I take a step forward right up into the thing's face, and I'm going to use a... Let's see here. I'm going to use a blade ward a as my action, as mm -hmm. to try and make myself more resistant to attacks. And then I'm going to just make one swing with the bonus action to try and uh, chop this thing down another size. Mm -hmm. I get a 14, which is not enough to hit. I end my turn right in front of him, blocking his path. And then he will step up into it. Um... And he will hit. He will take two swings at you. Bring it. First swing. Twenty-one. I use shield as a reaction, blocking it. With mystic shield. Second attack. Oh, natural one, as the Ooh. golem uh, swings wide and uh, spins around into the uh, into the ladder. ladder. Uh, giving himself uh, uh, advantage on strikes against him this round. Ooh, I will take it. Jessica. 
Um, I'll cast Firebolt against him, and I'll roll the attack with advantage. Oops, that should not be three, but anyway, uh, 23 to hit him. Uh, that definitely hits. Um, and then it's fire damage, so I don't know if he has resistance, but seven points of damage. He has no resistance against fire. Excellent. That helps. It has no resistance against fire. Is it resistant <laughs> to my physical attacks I've been making at it? Huh? Is it resistant to the physical attacks I've been making at it? No, it uh, only for non-magical weapons. I see. I'm going to step away for just a moment. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm going to waste this thing. Well, you guys are... You guys have definitely sliced it up uh, a sizable amount. Um, there uh, has been you know, considerable damage done, but it's still ticking away. You know, the, the golem is, is one of those creatures that you can't necessarily figure. It, as long as the, those those gems are glowing and they're still stone attached uh, mm -hmm. to them, it's still going to attack. Um, uh, I have a advantage on my attacks this turn. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. I'm uh I'm going to step up next to it. Mm hmm And uh let's see here. I'm going to give it I'm going to just give it two attacks with both advantage. Alright. Uh that's a reroll. I'm back. Okay. Tori's stepping up and taking a full attack. Okay, both of those hit. Cruise into dust. I got a 24 and a 21. Oh, yeah, that's it. And the damage? Uh, both attacks 11 points of damage. Um, I did 22 total. Uh, you can see that your your dewdrop is finally starting to take significant chunks out of this stone uh, creature. You, you swipe off one of its smaller arms that are down by its belly and another one that's one of its big arms that's up by its shoulder. It's down to two of the, the, the arms it used to have. Um, a small one on its left and a big one on its right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Looks uh, really it's not, it's not dead. Uh, and it regains its, its composure, its balance. It uses the small arm to push up against the ladder and, and rotate itself to you. Um, the... Uh, I know. The uh, the thing turns and looks at you, uh, and runs at you with a slam attack. Bah! With the one remaining big arm that it has. Um, Twenty-four on its attack. That's enough to hit. Let's see, make sure it doesn't add a hundred and six this time. Okay, thirteen <laughs> damage. Comes at you with the second attack. I'm at 33 life. Boosh! A, Ow. Great punch. A mighty punch. Uh, it hits you for another 113 damage. <laughs> uh, it does. He just pounds me into the ground like a railroad spike, and I just fall. I fall down the. I fall down. This is from the ceiling of the previous floor down. To. It does. It does thirteen damage, and you are thirteen. Uh, I'm down to twenty life. All right, um, Jesse. Uh, in the, the torch light, uh, you can see now that you couldn't see. From the underglowing white of the uh, the porthole before, mm -hmm. you can see that the statue on its head 
has uh, the mark of Mephisto on it. And it's etched in? And it's etched in. What do you do? Hmm. Should I try to aim at the mark, or do we? Do you think we needed to open that door? Um. Well, it says that the path won't open for anyone who doesn't have the mark. I say kill the golem and take the mark. <laughs> I, think you <laughs> stop that off. I say you kill this bitch. I say we kill this. <laughs> exactly. Blast away with my last magic missile for ten points of damage. Uh, you blow another uh, uh, hole through it, uh, but it's still, you know, it's it's it, you blow a kneecap off of it, and it's got one leg, and it and it's using its its big arm to kind of support itself. <laughs> a small arm, you know, it's it's got it's got big arm, big arm down here, little arm down here, and the they, little arm coming to get you. They sure don't make golem like they used to. This one definitely back <laughs> it. Uh, and it kind of begins to uh, crawl towards Tacitus, whose turn it is. Designed obsolescence. Uh, I'm going to use Blade Ward to be on the safe side since I'm down to 20 life, and I'm only going to take a single bonus attack against him this turn, and I slash. For 19, does a 19 hit? 19 hits. Suck it, Gollum. I do 11 points of damage. You uh, bring your your sword down in such a way that it uh, slices through that last little bit, and the last arm and leg are off, and just the the large arm uh, remains to to basically flail around um, as the rest of the stone golem is essentially uh, broken. It shouldn't take much effort to hit uh-huh. this arm. Uh, is the creature that have any off? ability to act now on its turn? Uh, well, I guess you're within range. It'll it'll take an attack on you with its one arm if you. Uh, sure, it takes it takes a final attack, but it only has one, and it definitely definitely doesn't have the plus ten it used to. You know, I'll give it the plus ten it used to, but it has disadvantage. That makes sense. Uh, you get to nineteen. Hits me. I got 19 armor. <laughs> and with one final gusto, yeah. the, uh, the beast does 20 damage to you. Holy cow. Uh, 20, 20 divided by 2 brings me down to 10 life. Mm-hmm. It would have it done enough damage <laughs> to knock me unconscious <laughs> on that swing. Yeah. The last... <laughs> Last little roll is it basically just rolls its entire mass and the one fist comes barreling down at you. Boosh! Uh, and in, in your in your guys' turn, you can make short work of it. Yeah, blast off its remaining. Kill it! Kill it with fire! Okay. Put the boots to it, medium style. I put it to the boots to it, metal style. <laughs> uh, and you finish off the the stone golem, um, the the head. And I reach down and I grasp the head with the uh, the uh, sigil of Mephisto. Yeah. Uh, and you do what with it? I hold it up to the portal that's sealed. Mm-hmm. The portal opens, uh, and the next uh, room uh, above you is now accessible. Oh, but now I'm scared. I, uh, spend that. Yeah, I let's spend take that a short rest and spend out. Um, I have a couple of rest. No, yeah, short rest, though, so. Can we I take a long sev- rest? No, probably not. I have 17 hit points after a short rest. I'm good to go. Um, I have a couple of healing potions. I can give you one. Or do I? I thought I did. Uh, I have one healing potion. No, I don't. Potion. Never mind. I think you have one, too. Oh, I have. It says I have three. I have three. Do you want one? 
Uh, yeah. I'll chug one of those healing potions. That's a good idea. How much does it heal? 2d4 plus 4? Or 1d8 plus 1? Uh, I think it's 2d4 plus 1. Oh, crap. I threw, I threw a I very difficult spot today. Really? It's pretty good. <laughs> What's the CR on a stone golem? It's challenge 10. Oh my god. Yeah, but you kept using magic missile? It has magic yeah. resistance to all spells. The magic missile has no resistance on it. So. Oh, to all spells? Yeah, yeah that would have... That he would have resisted that. He has advantage of all saving throws. Good thing you didn't notice that. <laughs> Does it also cut the damage? Cut the damage? No, it's um, just like it's the damage on saving throws and other magical attacks. So if you'd used if you'd use like fireball, it would have had advantage on its reflex save. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, because you used magic missile, there was no saves ever. Oh, that helps. Yeah, we're we fought it on the most ideal circumstances. I just went toe to toe with it with a magic weapon. Thank God. Mm-hmm. And with some clutch backup from my mage. Why can't I find a healing potion out there? I think it's too for this one. What's in the mic? What? Thank you. Four thousand. The shit out of that. Song. I heard. It's two d four plus two, Tori. Um, let me real quick. Uh, so I spend up some hit dice. I recover five hit points. I'm at 22 life. That's at least enough to hopefully get to a crow and pass out. Yeah, I spend four hit dice and recover myself a bit. The gems that made it up, are, are there any materials of value left over from um, what the stone golem is made up of? Um, there's the head. You have the entire head. The head has two gems in it. So if you keep that, that might be worthwhile. Um, okay. But other than that, that was the only thing. The stone itself is a little odd, too. If you just take some samples of the stone, you might find a geologist that would be interested in it. Okay. That is definitely not stone from this plane. Hmm. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's another stone from, uh, from Minecraft. <laughs> Never so it's super shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I hope desperately burn forever. there's nothing too dangerous also in the rest of this tower because uh, if there's anything like that golem, we are we are so screwed. No, we're running back down the stairs at that point. Yeah, if that's the plan. If we find find something in golem level of difficulty, we run. Uh, I still volunteer to go first up the ladder, though. <laughs> I'll at least buy you a few extra seconds for fleeing for our lives. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I won't. I won't decline that offer. It's what a bro would do. <laughs> I only have a single first level spell left, so as far as I'm concerned, that's either a magic missile or a uh, or a shield spell. Yeah, and I'm down to cantrips. 
That shield that shield spell saved my ass there. I have a feeling that that one time that he connected really good is going to F me there. <laughs> yeah, that would have been it. Yeah, the critical hit that you had blade warded? Oh, man. <laughs> that, yeah, that would have been good. Uh -huh. That would have smarted, but... I think I still would have survived after, even if that one had been a been a full hit because that would, then it would mean that oh no I would have been at negative five hit points yeah I'd have I'd have not made that encounter <laughs> it would not have made it I think it's interesting that, that Tastus has started going strictly towards using the sword and not a shield anymore I guess well, there are different different experience different. Before mm. the shield was my only magical item. Now that I have the sword, it's like I have a, t a complete set. The shield is really mm. only useful if I want to hurl it at somebody at a distance, and I usually can ping someone with a magic missile at a distance. Right. So there are few situations that arise where it's optimal to use the use the thrown the throwing shield. Right. Does Barnabas's keen senses detect anything as I'm uh, heading up the stairs in front of him? Roll, uh, roll perception. Yes, perception. <laughs> My password is 20. I know what your password is. <laughs> <laughs> Stop tempting me. My passive is almost always going to be higher, I feel like, because um, observant doesn't add to your active, it just adds to your passive stats. So Great. Like, I guess that's by design. It would be pretty powerful if you could roll high and have that extra bonus. Hmm. I think I like the second set of magic items that I rolled more than I like the first set. So, oh, there are magic uh, items in here. You uh, ascend to the next level of the um, the fortress, and you see uh, an intricate uh, uh, block formation on the walls as great cubes have st stick out. And you realize that um, every every floor you've been on uh, has been of some sort of geo geometric import, you know, as, as you kind of go up. There's my, my cube room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's slowly tapering as we ascend. Absolutely, as well. So you guys uh, come into this, uh, this room right here, and uh, the... Uh, threshold is made uh, clear as you now have uh, entered into a treasure room of sorts. He stumbled on Zod's vault. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, only those with the mark of, of Mephisto would, would have uh, have this the, the money here. And so, mm -hmm. access to it at least. I, I only, only people he trusted would have access to this room is what I'm trying to say. Um hmm. You know, anyone else would have been stronger than a stone golem to get past, and there's not many people that could have bested that golem. Right. No. In any case, uh, you guys sift through uh, large heaps of gold coins and um, gemstones and uh, treasure chests. You know, little little chests full of, of pearls and and diamonds. Um, all told, there seems to be a good amount of uh, of, of of loot here. Uh, amidst the uh, the treasure, you you see a couple items of interest. One is a, a small stone um, that is um, oh. A pink rhomboid. I'm not mixed hmm. player knowledge with character knowledge. 
Uh, it looks like or, a useless stone to me. Maybe the wizard would be interested in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also uh, a couple of books here. Uh, the books are written in... Um, looks like they're scratched in abyssal, actually. Which I can probably still read. Comprehend language is probably still active. I think we should take everything, including the cursed items, and identify them at a later time. Yeah. Um, that doesn't happen to be a <laughs> portable hole or like a handy haversack in there as well, right? There, there is not. Which begs the question of how you're going to uh, wrap up 9,000 gold pieces and assorted items and carry them off on your bird. Are there windows to this room? <laughs> Neg uh, negative. There are no windows in this room. Um, 50 gold pieces is approximately equivalent to one pound of equipment. So how many gold pieces are we talking exactly? Uh, you are talking... Uh, Some of it might be platinum. <laughs> uh, you're talking 180 pounds of, of treasure right here. We could oh. carry that, I mean, if we're really intent on it. That's just like a halfling worth. Of <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly, you'll have to find a way to, to stow it all. Um, you have you have your packs and stuff. I don't know how many extra packs or bags you have. We can say that you have uh, quite a bit. You, you try to jam every lasting inch of everything you have, uh, leaving nothing, of course, for your mercenary friends, those jerks. Uh, yeah, well, well, we, we intend we'll to fence with them once we, once we meet back up with them. The fact is, is their money is already owed to them by uh, by the former king. So it's like we'll we'll uh, we'll compensate them when we're able to. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm sure one of the lieutenants just got in here and made off with as much as he could. Sure. Okay. You take all nine thousand gold. You take the two books. <laughs> and you take the strange gemstone, and you ascend to the final. To the final you know, portion. You can you can hear uh, you can see light coming through the porthole on top. There's a um, a sigil on it, uh, similar to the warding sign from from below. Um, I hand the uh, I hand the head of the uh, demon to Barnabas, and then I stand ready with my sword with my sword and shield uh, right next to him. And I, and I yeah, say, maybe you should open this one, and I'll just be ready to handle whatever it is is on the other side. All right. I go up to the porthole and listen. You hear. <laughs> I hold the, the head out to the door. It's not the sound of sleeping. It's the sound of <coughs> high whistling, high-pitched whistling. One... Sarka? I'll be I'll be one moment. I'm okay. We're done wrong pipe. I couldn't swallow it we're witnesses. You can't just kill your girlfriend <laughs> like, on camera. I'm back. While it's being live streamed. Yeah, while well, it's being while well, it's being broadcast to the internet. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I hold the golem head up to the door and, and open it carefully. Uh, the, the porthole. <laughs> ah, and you guys ascend to the, the final uh, top. And up here you can see two statues. No, it's Circa up here. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong. You're wrong. You're incorrect. Uh, Stone golems don't whistle. <laughs> and you also see, you know, Sarka uh, sitting with her with her crows inspect the statues. Are they just mundane statues? Uh, they are just <laughs> mundane statues. They are um, uh, very much more. Um, statues of the uh, 
Midland motif. Oh, okay. You know, much more uh, <coughs> public, public, and public viewing statues. Great, mm. because it's near the top of the tower. Also, out of nowhere appears a terrace, and you guys may fight him as he falls <laughs> upon you. He just looks in through the window, like... First you take 20d6 falling damage from the Tarrasque falling from the sky. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find a... Oh, I can't use that. Uh, I rush up and, and, I am, and I embrace Sarcha, and I give her a hug in spite of the fact that I know it makes her uncomfortable. Yeah, she, she squirms. She squirms visibly. <laughs> And you can see Rusty pop out from underneath a crow's wing and said, What, Master? No hug for Rusty? Rusty! You didn't die! I was oh. certain you weren't going to make it. I, I always seem to live, sir. Uh, <laughs> maybe you could give me a little bit more dinner tonight, because <laughs> I am a survivor. Uh, survivors need food. Double rations for Rusty tonight. <laughs> Double rations! Tonight. Oh, thank you, sir. You're so generous. Thank you. You can even have a bone in your soup. Yes. Sarka, uh, Sarka whistles to the, uh, you know, whistles out. And you can see uh, the two other birds uh, fly up from from below, and uh, you guys are ready to to saddle up and and get out of here. Thank God. Well, uh, yeah, we need to get to a safe spot, safe haven to recuperate. <laughs> And then we need to get right back on the road and try to get that other lieutenant before he uh, he evades us because he might he as of earlier today he was just down on the eastern slope of the uh, of mm -hmm. the keep but in a day's time who knows where it'll be yeah um, I'm yeah. ready to keep going but I this is kind of where I plan for us to stop okay. Jesse are you are you good to DM um, I haven't. Yeah, I'm really prepared. I spent this morning fiddling around with Barnabas. Damn you, Jesse! <laughs> <laughs> um, we can keep going. I could, with that in mind. I, yeah, we could keep going. We could stop here, or I could take like 15, 20 minutes to prepare a little bit. We can keep going. I'm, I'm, I'm more than willing to to keep going and test this and. Well, uh, I'm enjoying this. I wouldn't mind keeping going. I'm, I'm grooving to this, assuming I can start at full hit points and... Uh, and yeah, full I want a long rest. And <laughs> then I'm ready to continue kicking ass. I enjoy I enjoy making you guys crave long rest. That's very satisfying <laughs> for me. No, John, I need eight hours. Well, you that's, can't get any right now. <laughs> dude, that's like the hardest thing about being a dungeon master is like trying to string it out and figuring yeah. out exactly how far they can go before a long rest becomes mandatory. That's well, like, oh, I'm going to kill you now. I'm going to, I'm going to send... Uh, because, because the game isn't interesting if we begin every fight with our entire list of resources. Oh, yeah. Like, it's we, true. We have I'm, to I'm deal with... Impressed. I'm always impressed at how fast that first fight goes. When you guys are in full resources. It's like, oh yeah, and I destroy him. Yeah, I need to start conserving my resources better. <laughs> well, uh, it's about time I learned that lesson. Well, both of us have been a little bit uh, trigger happy with our spells. Remember those uh, those uh, those hippogriff things that jumped us out in the plains? Yeah, we just incinerated them. We just incinerated them with the first salvo. We were like, you know what? I don't feel like fucking with these things all day. <laughs> <laughs> we're on our way somewhere. Like, <laughs> just kill your heels. Just uh, kill it with fire. Uh, okay, well then, I'm gonna make a sandwich. Where? What all direction right. do you guys generally head in? I guess. What? Um, you guys are gonna try to track down this lieutenant. Uh, we need to find a safe place to bed down for the night. I'm I'm gonna go make a sandwich real quick too. Actually, should we take ten minutes? Yeah, let's take ten, ten minutes. Sandwich. Uh, okay. This is a broadcast break. Uh, we we'll we'll, keep, we'll continue broadcasting. But we'll just kind of take a ten minute whatever break, and I'll hang out here. I'll I'll keep this channel open. That sounds great. <laughs> I'm gonna make my sandwich right here for all my YouTube guests. <laughs> I'm we going to another right now. Right. I feel like if I if I tell John Harden this is online, he will come by and see it. Are you uh are you going to 
Well, uh, never mind. Uh, we'll just uh, come come back in ten minutes. I'm gonna make some some pizza. Some pizza. I'm, I'm gonna keep this open, so you can just, I guess, hit me up for an invite, or just keep this open, or whatever. Okay, so, I'm just gonna close the window in the meantime, then. And yes, YouTube, I do own this this bread content and this this content right here, this mustard. I own this mustard. Mm. This is what sandwich making looks like. I'm going to go grab a Coke from downstairs. Cool.
<laughs> so what is the deal with this uh, live broadcast that we're doing? Why are we doing it? Mm -hmm. Like, there will be a theoretical audience for it, right? I guess there's a theoretical audience, but not really. The intention is that the live broadcast is a way to record the session. Right. For posterity. Did you uh, figure out who Caliban and Viscera were? Yeah, it seemed I, like you were more on page than me. Uh, after I I concluded it after last the last session before before you dropped more hints uh, in this session I had already concluded that this was the climactic battle of Zod the Immortal of uh, the band of the Hawk storming the castle of Zod the Immortal and um, Guts's Guts's horrifying re realization that he was not not the apex predator in in the universe, that there were demonic forces right. above and beyond humans. Mm -hmm. He might be the most badass human on the planet, but he's not the most badass organism. Are you talking about Berserk? Yeah. The story, the story is very loosely, loosely uh, casting allusions to... Uh, to right, that. this was... This was a brief encounter in that in that world for a second. Um, uh, because uh, 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 Caliban is kind of a smush of both Griffith and Guts as one character. Right. Whereas Viscera, well, she's the Viscera is still the Guts character, and I definitely. Mm. But there had to be a, a figurehead. Griffin, Griffin's ultimately a hard character to cast. So I ended up reading all of the Berserk manga. Okay, oh, Zach, sorry. You suggested soda and I couldn't risk. You, yeah. you read the Berserk manga? Yeah. There was something called, like, anime reading. And it goes on, man. Like, I didn't... I read the... So, the last time I read the Berserk manga was when I lived in Michigan. So before we all went together in Champaign, I ended up reading the whole season, watching the season, and then reading the manga, which had like another like a season's worth of information past where the first season leaves off. Right? Well, it kept going. That was like 2004, 2005 was the last time I read it. Ten years later, they had ten years worth of volumes of Berserk. Oh my oh, god. Sorry. It's wow. still not over. It's still going. Like, there's no end to this fucking, this, this world that they're in. And, uh... Anyways, the last, the last volume ended up being very awesome, and it, it, if, if I have to wait another ten years for it to catch up to another place where I could read it all again, <laughs> that's fine. But the because like the place where I ended was like very awesome, um, but in terms of this story, it's just kind of like oh you know what these two uh these two side characters make good NPCs you know. Mm. Um. So. You guys are gonna try to go after his lieutenants, huh? Mm -hmm. First, we need to bed down for a night, find a safe place. We should probably just hide this gold somewhere, like fucking bury it. <clears throat> or spend it. Mm. That's also a good idea. We, we, we should also decide whether or not we're going to set aside half of it to give back to Caliban in good faith, or we're just going to spend it all on ourselves and lie. Mm. We have our own hirelings to pay in all of this. Caliban does not know that the treasure exists. I see no reason to bring it up with him, because uh, there's, no, there's nothing morally obligatory about it. It would be a show of good faith, though. It seems like he could be a very powerful ally, which is something we need. Mm-hmm. 
I think uh, I think the best way to make powerful allies are through respect and fear, not with uh, gestures and gifts. Hmm. I'm not sure I agree. I feel like um... we should find ways for him to give us stuff. That's what makes him a useful ally. Hmm. Is there a place that we could do a uh, transactions of a magical nature while we're here in Midland? Not if not immediately, maybe later on. While you're here, while you're here in Montebank, um, Montebank yes. has largely been stripped of most of its magical resources. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> what was your? Uh, your archmage's name, Tori? Uh, Martine. Mar Martine, yeah. Yeah, when Martine was deposed, uh, much of the uh, infrastructure of his uh, mages was dissolved in favor of Grigori's um, hierarchy. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> did Greg did black did our speech in the power vacuum that existed for the mercenary groups to move in and the king to try to reclaim his deposed throne? Did uh, Archmage Martin survive the implosion of his government? He's in a prison. Martin is rotting away in a dungeon somewhere um, in Gregory's lands. That's right. He's been magically protected against. You guys tried to scry on him once, I believe. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, we'll have to do some work to bust him out. Um, That's some high-level magic, yeah. In terms of... We'll need to, like, launch a distributed denial of service attack against um, Grigori's wards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In terms of friendly places you could spend money to on magical things, I would say that the um, the cleric family, the Onarfis, would accept money of all sorts. The um, who's your archmage, Jesse? Um, oh God, what was his name? Javed. J, I think. Javed. Javed. That's right. Uh, Javed, uh, you could you might find some some more open trading there in Arcane Supplies. Um you'd have to reveal that you've come out of Hermitage if you went there. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Uh can I uh recuperate to uh Refresh my uh, spell slots and everything. Where, where are you guys sleeping? Um, what's the lay of the, okay from the top of the tower? What's the lay of the land look like around us? Montebank was the uh, mountainous region of um, of this land, so. Montebank has large um, rolling foothills and rolling mountains and uh, civiliz uh, towns that are basically cut out of the sides of these mountains and stuff like that um, that watch over um, large valleys. And so this would be the three valley region um, that you're in right now. And it's basically a place where three large valleys uh, meet. Um, I think... I think we should use the crows to make camp in a place that's very inaccessible and where we can see people approaching from, uh, from where we're at. Or, yeah, we should f just find a high perch somewhere. Uh, should that require some type of roll to find a, a suitable a suitable camp spot? Jesse's perception is such that. Right. 
as long as you look not exactly that spot that area for us. Right. <clears throat> you make Legolas look like a geriatric. <laughs> yeah, find some place that just has no mode of access except for flying creatures. Yeah. Well, your paranoia is such that you'd be like, no, he can come from that way. What about that way? What about that way? <laughs> there. Only birds can get there. Then just look up. <laughs> Those here, mountain goats look here, suspicious. <laughs> um... He inventories 2,000 different possible campsites and then narrows them down systematically, eliminating right. them based off of his different different views strategically. <laughs> Absolutely. He finds the exact correct, the exact most defensible position that you guys could find within the mountains. You land your birds. Um, Sarka uh, begins to make camp with Rusty uh, as you guys um, tend to your wounds. <clears throat> yeah. Get settled in. Actually, if this place is remote enough, we could leave our loot here. Uh, well, actually, yeah, we should take the time to identify the things. Um, so there yeah. were a couple of books and an ion stone that need identified, right? A pink rhomboid. We'll take the time to cast identify on each of the items in turn. Does identify a cantrip or do that as a first level spell? It's a first level spell, but it's a ritual, so it can be cast uh, without being prepared. Gotcha. And it can be cast without using spell slots as well. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Alright, your Ion Stone, which you find out it's an Ion Stone, is a Ion Stone of Fortitude. Mm -hmm. The Ion Stone of Fortitude increases your constitution score by two. Oh my god, that's exactly what it always did. That's good. <laughs> It is really good, and it is by far a better choice for you than it is for me. Even though I'd benefit from constitution boost, it's like free constitution boost for you. Why isn't it... Uh, why would it be more useful for me? Because I can get other forms of gear and equipment that can boost my constitution. Like, the Ion Stone doesn't take up an equipment slot. Oh, um, in the meantime, though, it's going to be more useful to you. Like, if we find something else later on that boosts your constitution, by all means, I'll take your hand-me-downs, but it seems like in the short term it's going to be more useful on you. I will take it. If that, if you think, <laughs> if you think that it's a better decision for the group, the thing, here's the reason, here's my reasoning that you could use, use it, is I have 61 HP. You have how much? 38. 38 is not a lot. One crit could drop Yeah, that's true. It can flatten so, me. So one crit could drop you, so that small bump of, what is it, what are yeah, we talking about? Uh, an extra 8 HP. Extra 8 oh. HP might be the yeah. difference between, okay. between uh, you staying conscious and losing consciousness. Okay, shall I hang on to it then? I think you should have it, because it, it makes my job of defending you a little bit easier. It's like, right. it's, it's not okay. enough, just for, you know, in my mind it doesn't make sense just for me to stay up. I, I'm only going to be successful as long as you're there to provide made, away. Yeah, magical support. So, Experimentally, you know, while I'm sitting there fiddling with it and identifying, I set it into orbit around my head. Oh, you look so fancy. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Um, and then I'll bump my max HP up to 46. Yeah, that makes that makes me more comfortable as uh, as a defender, actually. Sounds good. Yeah, that sounds good. The other two are books. 
Uh, one, the pages are, um, yeah, they're both reading Abyssal. One, um, one looks like it's bound with flesh and, um, has a, looks to be a face with beards, uh, beard, you know, ripples coming out of the face is just, looks like it's in... Complete it's the natural ups. dude's face that's been stretched over the fucking binding. The face, the face looks like to be in complete ecstasy as it's a, it's a reached an epiphany, um, and the other one is uh, pages made out of uh, stone, um, thin thin stone that are bound together by discs, but same as before, scratched in uh, through abyssal with uh, what looks to be some sort of picture as well. So, you cast Identify on them? First I cast Comprehend Languages, and just read what they say on the outside without opening them. Or I assume they're, are they bound shut in any way, or do they open? They open, but there's no title on the covers. You've got to open them to inspect them a little bit. Uh, I'm going to cast Identify then without, without opening them. Good idea. Which one do you which one do you cast it on first? Uh, the stone one. Uh, you find that it is a um, a manual for creating stone golems. Hmm. Specifically, the kind of golem that you uh, just fought. That's pretty cool. sweet. Yeah, that's awesome. Um. Obviously, sharing with Tacitus is so kind of mumbled to myself and uh, you see, that's, through the items. You see, that's just automation and, and death by technology right there. You're going to just replace <laughs> me with an unthinking, unfeeling stone golem, and then I will no longer even be needed. So you, you identify as a manual of stone what golem. Do you try to read it? Uh, no, I do not try to read it. Well, actually, should I, should I roll intelligence or something to see if I'm smart enough to know not to read it? <laughs> <laughs> I, as a player, know not to read that. Sure, roll roll intelligence. It might be wisdom. Roll wisdom. Maybe arcana? Roll... roll hmm. Arcana would arcana. pull something roll up arcana. on that. Roll arcana. <laughs> Man, that no. portal looks like a sweet new book about making stone golems. I would totally browse the pages. <laughs> you can browse it without... I forget what happens. I just remember it being awful. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had to actually attempt to utilize it in order to be attempt burned to by read it. Yeah. Yeah, you have to closely analyze it for one minute. Yeah. All right, and the other one? Um, yeah, and I'll cast Identify on the other one. A tome of clear thought. Oh. Oh. Holy shit. Yeah, that permanently increases intelligence. By two. That's, that's really good. Um, that's obviously for you and not for me because my my key abilities are strength and con. Do you want to take the ion stone then? No, I think you should take both still. Okay. Because I have I have an arsenal of magic weapon magic items that are working for me right now. I think plus two con plus two intelligence will put you on a higher playing field. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Uh, once I've identified the tome of clear thought, um, what are the rules for utilizing it? If you spend twenty eight hours over a period of six days or fewer studying the book's contents and practicing its guidelines, your intelligence score is increases by two, as does your maximum for that score. Manual then loses its magic but regains it in a century. Okay. So it's something I'll have to set aside until we have a week's worth of downtime. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. That's awesome. That is pretty cool. That was all random. Yeah. That's sick. The, the, first, the first random roll ended up being similarly good. There were things in it, but I was like, I'm going to roll again and, and see what the other... The other 
the second role had more diversity and better, yeah. I think. It, when, I, when I saw the manual of golems, I was like, that's pretty perfect after a fight with stone golems. Yeah, that fits. Yeah. Exactly. So, awesome. um, and that's that's kind of beneficial for all parties, just you guys have to use it. So, in any yeah. case, we, uh, what do you do now? Um, you guys have identified your items. You uh, are, are bedding down for the night. Mm -hmm. I cast alarm. Good call. And then, and then I pass. Not that anything can trigger it, but <laughs> I cast it nonetheless around the entrance to our um, little shelter. Okay. Um. Really, you do, you think we shouldn't give Caliban anything? Uh, it is he doesn't know we have anything yet. But I still feel like we need to continue to extend some kind of offering to him. Because, like, we, we aren't of much use to him right now, except as, like, loose cannons that he could maybe point in the right direction. He actually has quite a lot of power at this moment. I feel like we have to either do some action for him that will show our good faith or provide him, like, with material results. As long as Mephisto is still alive, which he is, and Caliban's position is very precarious, he won't be able to unload us or betray us very easily until Mephisto is out of the picture. So there's no reason to pay him off or give him shit until Mephisto has been taken care of. And I guess dealing with the lieutenants could be helpful. Exactly. Like we're scoring. And then we take that crown and we plant it on some rogue sap in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Be like that dude killed the king. Yeah, that's the guy who killed the king. Well, we no, we can find somebody who was close to him who actually could have done it. But that's we're getting way ahead of ourselves in that regard. Either way, you know, maybe we do have to end up paying off Caliban at some point. I see no reason to. Uh, to feel like we owe him anything in advance, because we, we might end up accruing costs with this venture as we go along. That's true. Um, do you want to just split up the gold, then, that we have available? Well, oh, fuck yeah. 4,500? Yep. You don't give Sarcha any gold? She totally brought those crows for you guys. It's true. Sarcha, Sarcha can have can have a third of, uh, it was 3,000, 3,000, 3,000 that way, right? Because See, I'm much better off, I am I feel much better about paying Sarsha uh, than paying Caliban, whom we've just met. Okay. All right. Yeah, we include Sarsha in on the deal. We cut her an even, an even third of the of the treasure, even though Barnabas and I easily do ninety percent of the work between them. Between yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Sarch has been investing in mutual funds, though, for the betterment of the party. <laughs> okay, we expect to see returns on that, though. There you go, uh, Sarcha. How about we just designate you? How about we just designate you as the manager of our company from this point? <laughs> So now all of our acquisitions go into a group tank that you will be, that you will be the uh, the manager of. You'll get a ten percent of everything from now on as manager, and uh, you'll you'll manage the uh, the use of income for uh, growth of the company uh, with Barnabas and I as uh, as lead as lead executives. So you'll you'll put the nine thousand in. I'll get a cut of nine hundred. Right off the top, and with that remaining eighty-one hundred, invest in new supplies and gear for you guys. Yeah, that becomes that becomes part of the company. It's invest reinvested back into the company. Uh huh. What do you say? Six percent manager's fee. Huh? Sorker, Sorker agrees. That's fine. To ten percent. So, so should I just keep track of Sarpa's pot of gold? No, just just keep track of your own money, split it down the half. So you got right forty four thousand and fifty a piece. And I mean, right. I guess Sarka will probably just be 
it's fair to split you guys down the middle in terms of what you can spend. That's what that's what her understanding of, of accounting is. Yeah. Okay. Unless there's something like that where she's like, no, we're buying a boat so we can, we're, we're a chartered passage. It took a like, hundred bucks, so you guys both lost 50. Sorry. Okay, so, I've got exactly 4,500 GP now. So, um, we... Do we sleep through the night and recover our spells? You sleep through the night and recover your spells. Excellent. But not without having an unpleasant dream, Jesse. You are still in contact with the the extra planar divinations that you've been receiving. And something strange happens on this night where, in addition to the normal unsettling dreams that you have, um, there's also um, a moment where you're you're almost certain that you see a, a character in your dreams that, that that reaches out for you, and almost like he's traveling in in reverse. Uh, a small gnome uh, walks up to you, but like in reverse in reverse walking, very uh, Stephen Lynch. Uh, <laughs> it comes up and. And, and points to the sun, you know, the, the rising sun, and, and, like, lights his pipe on it and smokes, and then in a wink of an eye, he's, he's gone. He hmm. says, I'll see you. I would like to work on crafting some sort of potion that makes me not dream. <laughs> As a hermit, I have proficiency with an herbalist <laughs> kit, <laughs> and I would like to sleep the sleep of the dead. <laughs> Roll herbalism kit. Roll herbalism. Add your proficiency bonus to that. Correct. Ten. You get you roll the ten. I think 10 is a reasonable... 10 is high enough number. to roll a blunt. Yeah. Ten, <laughs> ten is I find some poppies. <laughs> Make an opiate. Right, you, you find the easiest the easiest way out, which is to just <laughs> like take some NyQuil, essentially. Hey, hey give me a of that. You be, uh, Tacitus wakes up, he's like, hey, 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 pass it. Puff, puff, pass. <laughs> um... And you and you dream you you uh, you 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 return to sleeping, uh, a sleep of the dead, and um, you hear just a voice um, as you sleep. You don't see anything else, just a single phrase that you remember when you wake up. Meet me. That's it. You sleep the sleep of the dead, and you wake up, and you have all your spells back, and you're fully charged for the day. Um. Well, let's uh, let's try to find that uh, that other lieutenant that was embattling the uh, rest of the forces of the uh, the king of Midland. Yeah, he was still. When I wake up in the middle of the night. I tell Tacitus about my dream, and yeah, I want to take a moment to, to cast a divination ritual and ask who the gnome from my dream was. Barnabas, have you ever considered not to cast doubt on your career path, but have you ever considered? Maybe knowing the future is a bad idea? It's like being caught in quicksand. It just draws you in, obviously. But the future, by its definition, is something that hasn't happened yet. So why invest so much of your great talent into viewing things that might not even happen? They will happen. They will draw us in and suffocate <laughs> us in their great mass. These events, so much larger than ourselves. You see, this is why I'm glad that I was born with 14 intelligence, because if I was born with 16 or more intelligence, I might not be able to make it just as a human being. Yeah. I might just Hemingway myself. Yeah. <laughs> 
for the rest of breakfast, Barnabas sits back into the kind of taciturn silence, puffing on his opium pipe. <laughs> Glazed look out over the mountains. Yeah. To, <laughs> meanwhile, Tacitus smiles stupidly as he practices with his sword. <laughs> Choo, choo, choo. This is awesome. <laughs> Dude, I already can imagine this story being recounted as a, uh, as just like, you know, uh, uh, annotated chronicles of uh, Dragonlance and everything like that, because all of those characters were actually played from, like, PC perspectives inside of mm -hmm. the story the first time they went around, and then the, the authors just did their best to recapture, you know, the spirit of what was going on about there. I think this uh, cool. dynamic that's developing between Tacitus and Barnabas is is really cool because it's like we're both obsessing over the future of the country and everything like that, but... Yeah. Different, from different points of view. Well, what, yeah, very well, different... About the, the Dragonlance thing is that they pretty much had the adventure written... And I feel like they must have railroaded their characters a little bit because they had certain mm -hmm. expectations of results based on the yeah. fact that... Um, or maybe just that they... Because when you read the Entertainer Chronicles, there's the first battle they have against the Black Dragon in the swamp. And the Black Dragon, if you read the Annotated Chronicles, it has the annotation where it says, the first time the players came across this well... Uh, they lowered Tannis down into it, and the dragon woke up and burned everybody ass, and they totally you know, TPK'd. Uh, and then they did it again, and they TPK'd. And so, like, like the, the story result is, like, the third time that they came across the dragon, and they're like, all right, we're not going to fuck up this time. <laughs> oh, my God. I had, not, I had not known that. That's pretty funny. Yeah. So... <laughs> I, I enjoy I enjoy our stories more because I, I feel like you guys are good enough players that you probably you'll come close to death but you won't die entirely. Uh, but we would be allowed to be incinerated <laughs> if it came to that. Well, uh, we're we're pretty good about taking like reasonable approaches to the situation, but uh, the truth is we're we're all at the mercy of chaos and random chance uh, because. Mm -hmm. You know, a crit, you know, one crit can change the outcome of the entire yeah. fight for for one side or the other. It's the, and that's the reason that we do D&D &D instead of football. Like, every other male dude ski on, in America sits down and they watch football and they watch with anticipation, like, what's going to happen? What's going, you know, what's transpiring here in front of me? And for whatever reason, we just never partook of that ritual that every other guy in America obsesses over and it's like D and D completely fills fills that void. I, I'm noticing that more and more how how the NFL is other people's D and D. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Completely. Like fantasy football totally seals the deal. That's the full transition from football into D and D. I mean, everybody has their own sport. There was a, a blog post I read a couple months ago that was kind of like making that same conclusion that I really liked. It's like some people are like really into like coffee and like getting the perfect grounds and like doing their fucking magic over the top of it. And it's just like you can be like, oh, that's stupid, that's insane. But it, you know, that's just their sport. Like yeah. their sport is trying to make the perfect cup of coffee and like talking about that. I look at it as their zen. Their zen yeah. is that moment, is making the perfect cup of coffee. Well, you can yeah. still compare it to the athletes' uh, like search for perfection and what what sure. it is they do. Well, it's and, like the same way a football fan mm -hmm. like delves into the statistics and like yeah. I don't know, reading into yeah. and like strategizing and theorizing about it. Yeah, humans humans enjoy mastery. We enjoy strategy. Yeah, why we spend our uh, most of our history creating wars that have no end, and we celebrate our, our big events throughout history as these wars that have been, battles that have been won, and very important moments of this and that, with only marginal moments of peace and, and non-strategies slash uh, yeah. uh, master of, of combat. So it's, 
we all we all find mastery of combat in our own way, I guess. That's how I look yeah. at it. Yeah. Sometimes you got to fight the coffee machine, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I, I get up and um, I I'm gonna cast a divination ritual and ask who the gnome from my dream was and where he wants me to meet me. Meet him. You ask a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity to occur in seven days. So you ask who this gnome is. You ask who this gnome is. Or you ask where does this gnome want to meet me? Uh, where? Um, where and when? A, what location in space time would he like to meet us? Sure. Um. You get a um, omen of a rising sun rising from the east. Um, just have a sip of it. And have three birds flying in the sky, three crows that fly into the sun that rises from the I, from the I east. Once I did it. Hmm. We see Can them we land on a. Um, Oh, damn it. Should use the three values here. That's fine. Um, you see them land um, near a, a, a town um, at the base of uh, a mountain uh, and at the coast. So it's a town that's built inside, into the side of the mountain, into a port that goes out into the, the water. Hmm. <clears throat> Recount all this for Tacitus. And so I take it this is some distance away. No idea. Hmm. You get a map skill? You just got an image of a city. Yeah, of a coastal city. Hmm. I think we should uh, continue to head for the lieutenant as we planned. Well, uh, I I have a feeling that this uh, this person who's trying to con contact you probably knows the f strands of fate that we're walking upon. So if he wants to meet with you, I'm pretty sure he knows where to place himself in order to find you. Yeah, I feel like our paths are set to cross. They will. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Meanwhile, this uh, now we know what to look out for at least. You, you could, you could have, uh, you could also use your divination to try and reveal the identity of the lieutenant that we're after, because we know this person only through reputation. Who is it that we're even coming in, in to swoop in to try and assassinate here? Yeah, we could. It'll have a chance of failure today now, though. Um, to do a second. Uh, wouldn't you? Isn't it worth the the chance of failure of getting an in, inaccurate result? Do you want to know who he is or where he is? Uh, we know the basic of where. If we go to where we thought where he was yesterday, we'll at least if we don't find him, we'll at least find tra a trail of where he's going. Mm -hmm. So, try to reveal his identity, his her her identity, because we literally know nothing about this demonic individual. Okay. Yeah, start casting a, a second divination ritual to try to reveal the identity of the lieutenant that we're looking for. <clears throat> um, you see a... Um, You see a, a prison, and um, you watch. You're out of body as you you watch this prison get um, invaded, or not invaded, but kind of uh, thrust full of, of guards as they clear out cells 
uh, and they push everybody into a into an arena, and uh, you can hear you know people pushing, you can see people shoveling and pushing around, and um, one of them come forward, you can see a pantomime of you know them making you know uh, looking for the strongest among them, and some big gorilla-looking man, you know, huge, huge, you know, um, just powerhouse of a, a guy walks up, and he claims that he's the strongest, and uh, a smaller man, about half the size, with, you know, an elongated nose and a, a very blocky face, um, steps forward to, to laugh at this big man who says he's the strongest, and, um, the, the big man challenges into a fight, and the little man, in a blink of an eye, is covered in blood, and uh, you, you don't even have time to see it in your vision of the explosion of all the guy's guts and entrails over the entire group. Um, and you see a, uh, uh, a smile creep across the little man's face. Um, and he says, I guess that makes me the leader of the black dogs. Hmm. So you can recognize this guy's face then. Yeah, obviously recount all this. Yeah. And as I snap out of it. So <clears throat> it's not as good as having a name, but we at least have a physical description to be able to get this guy. So and um, we know where to find him. And at least we're given some uh, some inclination that he's mortal. He didn't appear to be uh, appear to be a. Uh, De demonic in nature, but then again, he was under disguise. Well, be a... it's impossible. What are you it, saying? Yeah, based off of your vision, you can't conclude who what kind of creature it was, whether it was human or something worldly. So he's trying to take over the black dogs faction within um, the Midland armies. So at the least, if we can handle him, we should be able to bring the black dogs into alignment under Caliban. Yeah. I think uh, we're probably going to have to go down and infiltrate into their camps now, then, and um, I don't see what we can learn. Can you do anything to uh, help me blend in? I kind of stick out like a sore thumb with my... Uh any sword and shield and half plate and everything. No, I can't do anything. I mean, the only people who would directly recognize us would be the three guards we left alive in the in the king's ten. True. We are kind of a rogue element here in this country. We should approach him as prospective allies in order to appraise him. And then... Uh, I feel like I'm ill-equipped for this type of mission. You really are armed with the foreknowledge and the uh, the subtlety for this one. I think I think you need to lead on this one because I'm a little bit beyond my depth. I mean, what do we think? We're, we're probably going to have to eliminate him, right? That's my thinking: is to just get close to him, and I can do the the the, snip, the quick snip snip work and uh, and take care of the guy. But uh, it's a matter of getting me close enough without getting uh, killed by his subordinates. Maybe we could go and gather some information on the black dogs themselves. I mean, I wonder if there's any way to just insinuate ourselves into their ranks. Uh, can it I? Sounds like they basically pull in prisoners. Can I knowledge knowledge general without my proficiency bonus? Uh, just roll intelligence for uh, information on the black dogs. Sure. This so is that's a, a really I, creepy picture. I that's the face you see, Jesse. That's is that him? That's, that's Mephisto. The, no, that's not Mephisto. That's the that's the black dog face. Oh, wow. That's the lieutenant we're going after. I'm already scared. I got There's a twenty. A I got a twenty on my knowledge of the black dogs. Mm-hmm. The black dogs are um, led by Wild. They're a band of criminals and rapists that are listed by the King of Midland. 
to fight during the, the Hundred Year War, and their ruthless behavior against civilians uh, has resulted in them being banished to a remote region of Midland. Hmm. Oh, so they aren't currently in the employ of, well, I guess the then current king. Well, yes and no. They become like a rogue subfaction. It seems that they are very vulnerable to leadership. This demonic entity has taken control of this uh, faction once loyal to the King of Midland, and now they are they've they've been pushed as far to the edge of the playing field as they possibly can, to the point where nobody's even noticed their betrayal. So, uh, so that. That definitely puts a bit of uh, impetus on us to try and stop them here, because if this guy gets away, he's definitely going to continue to sow, sow uh, uh, chaos into the ranks of this country, and uh, Mephisto will just make a return. He'll be back as quickly as he left. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems like if we can eliminate the, the lieutenant, then... We might be able to recruit um, some of the Minotaurs. I mean, it's you need you would need people of loyal to Caliban to be forcibly put into place in command to get a hold of of these guys. Mm -hmm. They need some good old fashioned army discipline. Well, uh, if we can off their commander, then we can take the black dogs for us, and this especially amoral unit could be ours. This is exactly the kind of talent that I'm looking to recruit out here. <laughs> a bunch of psychopaths. <laughs> what? What? I, don't, I feel like they need to be reformed or kept under tight control. It's pointless to try and ask an animal to not be an animal my friend Barnabas. Ultimately, all we can do is direct the animal and allow them to be who they are. It is much better that they rape and pillage the forces of Grigori than they do that of their own kinsmen. Roll, roll some sort of alignment. Roll, roll will, Tori. <laughs> got 14, nigga. Oh, okay. <laughs> You don't know my. You do not know my neutral good. I will show you neutral good. <laughs> I think these dogs need to be kept on a short leash. These dogs need to be leashed. I agree. Okay. We need a lot of tough men with short leashes to get them in order. Then, by all means, we can set them loose on our enemies. Yeah, once we can direct them against Grigori, then they might be of great use. Hmm. All right, so how do we want to approach them? Do we want to try to get ourselves captured and sold to them or, or picked up by them? How exactly do they go about recruiting? Do we know that? Hmm. They're, um, they're in the east um, where you guys were... Uh, that's who you were told um, by dude. Um, <laughs> the well, you really don't know where they're at. I mean, you know that they're banished. You know the general direction they're in. Yeah. Uh, with regards to like trying to come in through subterfuge and whatnot, I can say that say honestly that. Uh, my, my talents are not suited for that. I'm used to facing my opponents on a battlefield, and it's really hard for me to act subtle or try to put do any sort of uh, stealthy aspect to this approach. Like, um, well, We wouldn't have to lie. We could just go commit a real crime and you, actually get imprisoned. <laughs> you can cast invisibility, right? Yeah. On both of us? Yeah. Okay, so I suppose we walk in... As subtle as possible, and just try to be t tell as few lies as possible. And as a backup, we can always cast invisibility and get the fuck out of there as a as a retreat okay. option. That's just that's my own and that's start my, to try to that's my contribution because all of this is subtlety that I think is really only the capability of a wizard to be able to figure Not out. Not really. I mean, neither of us has the charisma to do any kind of deception. Hmm. Uh, uh, 
I think you're. I think you're right. Uh, but you do have your vast intellect now, slowly being expanded by that. Uh, by that book of clear thought, maybe you can. Maybe you can think of some some way in order to oh. get us. Have you started reading the book? Am I allowed to? Can I read it? Do I have downtime enough to start reading it? Or um... you can read it for forty eight hours within seven days. Yeah, I mean, you actually would need like a week's downtime to do that, right? That's basically like a work week worth of study. Right. It's like, <clears throat> and I assume that yeah, you probably you have to do it all at once. Yeah, because it says seven days, so you right. wouldn't want to get interrupted. We haven't started on it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Admittedly, it's a meaty read, so I can understand <laughs> have other things in mind. Paged through it, but mm -hmm. haven't started studying. Um. Okay, let's just been, yeah. Let's, you're like very out there. Huh? Okay. If you were to page through it and try to read it a little bit, you'd realize it's just, it just it takes it'll take a long, hard study on this book because it starts talking about crazy things that make no sense to you. Yeah, it's, it's discussing for, metaphysics and Aristotelian logic and whatnot. No, not, not Aristotelian logic. I mean, it's written in Abyssal, and it talks about how chaos, the only way to clear thought is by embracing chaos. <laughs> burn, burn it. Burn the book. Burn it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's my book. Chill out. <laughs> You're not burning it. Relax. Would you want to burn this face? Look at this poor man. He's been through enough. Relax, Tacitus. Hit this blunt. Okay, Barnabas. <laughs> um, you know, let's uh, break camp for the day then and start flying in the direction of at least where we last heard reports of where the black dogs were. Sure. Yeah. Break camp. And... You can um, you can uh, feel that the the dawn has brought a chill wind um, from the north as you guys begin to briskly set up your, your campsite. Um, you set off towards the east? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's where Caliban said that the fighting was going down. Uh, and right. So that's, that's where his intel led us. So I'm just going off of, based off of what Caliban said, because hopefully we can track this guy down. And if we're flying into the sun, that, that means we're probably heading the direction that the gnome is as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you, you totally realize that you're, you're flying into the rising sun as the day starts to noon, and your three crows fly to the east. And... What'd you say? I said, creepy! <laughs> I just got the worst deja vu. Yeah, it's like, that's what you get for being a diviner. Like, that's my I point that I was trying to make, because it's like, you look into the future, and then you see things that you cannot possibly change or control, and you're filled with all sorts of doubt and thoughts about your insignificance of the grand scheme of the whole tapestry of life, and you kind of just disappear into all of it. We are but actors playing a role. <laughs> the entire <laughs> superstructure of the universe is already preformed. Time is only our minds moving slowly through that stream, experiencing it moment by moment. It's so you're saying basically when we go to face this guy, we're either going to succeed or fail is already written in front of us and we just don't know it yet. It it's already it already exists. It already happened. And it's not just an illusion. It's a part of a single, immobile, universal structure of being. See, I don't see that as a possibility, because it, I, from time from my perspective, is it something that hasn't happened yet, and so it is not a fixed, fixed prob probability. There are so many random events that could change its outcome. 
random or intelligent event <laughs> is an outcome. Like, it's unlikely that there will be an intelligent contribution from me, but I might still be there, present, while somebody else contributes something intelligent to the outcome. Mm -hmm. so, so, did they teach you that in diviner school? No, that's what I got from conferring <laughs> with the demons and angels. <laughs> Anyway, I think we need to just kill this guy because in some future timeline, we've already done it. <laughs> Onwards. You guys fly east, and before long, you can see uh, little plumes of smoke rising from uh, the, uh, the horizon beyond as the sun travels to its apex. Uh, the smoke comes from a village that seems to have been recently uh, plundered and burnt down. There are still people uh, scavenging through the remains of the village as you fly uh, near it. Uh, are there any innocents that are still inside of the village, or has everyone been killed or run off? That's what I'm saying. There are still... There are still there seems to be people in the village scavenging their remains. You can't quite tell if they're original townsfolk, if they're just people that have happened upon in their... But they're not, they don't seem to be pillaging. They seem to be going through the wreckage. Hmm. Let's fly low, lower and take a closer look. Fly in low. Um, you fly in low and you can uh, see some of them run for cover, others that don't seem to care at all that you're there, and um, few that... Uh, and some that don't care that you're there and they continue on their doing, and some that don't care that you're there because they just don't care that anything is there. As yeah. a thousand yard stare. You're shell shocked? A little shell shocked, yeah. You can tell that there's, you know. Yeah. I, um, land, I land in and amongst them. The scavengers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, one one that, that hides from you. What? What do you want from us? What is it that happened here? Tell me. Are you here to kill us? No, no, good. We're, uh, we're, <clears throat> we came, we came from the the band of the Minotaur. We came to report a victory over the evil, uh, the evil Mephisto. Uh, what is it that's happened here, though? We were. We were attacked by those that bear the flag of Midland. They, they came through and they, we all welcomed them with open arms and, and they set upon our village like, like animals. Like, they, like dogs. Like dogs. They ate our food and they took our women. I look at Barnabas and just nod. How long ago did they pass through here? Uh, two days. Hmm. A night, a night in the day. Don't worry, sir. <laughs> the two of us are going to take them all on. Yeah, we're we're <laughs> going to kill, we're going to kill you them are, all single-handedly. You are madmen. They had one with them that smiled as he watched us all scream and beg for our women, for my wife, my Cassandra. She's gone now. I'll never get her back. Where did they uh, go? They, they traveled east. There's more villages that way. Uh, I go down to my pocket and I give the man ten gold coins subtracted from my uh, from my in from my uh, uh, inventory, and I tell him to make <clears throat> to re and I tell him to rebuild. That these lands are going to be facing a new time of stability. That your uh, your loss will not be without its compensation. He takes the gold and they they kind of drop from his hand. Is like. Nothing shall replace my wife. Mm -hmm. This gold. These are not memories. Keep your money. 
Mm-hmm. We have nothing here. We don't need your charity. I uh, I gather up the gold and uh, I place it in his hand again, and I try to intimidate him. I say, "You take this money and you rebuild, damn it!" <laughs> don't give up. Scare scare him into scare him into love. I want to roll intimidation. I want to scare him into survival mode. Yeah. Uh, roll that's roll my, with advantage. That's my intention. Is roll with advantage. I have minus one. So I got a ten. Uh, ten's enough to scare a villager. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> um. You take this gold, damn it! I, I shall rebuild with it. You rebuild. I shall re- avenge... Barnabas and I shall revenge your Cassandra. And I spur <laughs> my, my, my crow and I take off dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> but what was your name? What was your name, hero? <laughs> I don't. I don't even look back. I just fly purposefully. Like it's too late to turn back now. I'm committed to. The- <laughs> this is how I travel everywhere, <laughs> with flawless intention. <laughs> Sorry. And all sorts of things pass me. <laughs> More. Sarka, Sarka takes more money from your fund and gives the gives the villagers some money, some more from from your from your stash. Uh huh. Of her out of her personal money and flies off with you. You're saying you're saying that she makes a managerial decision <laughs> to assist the people of the town. Uh based on your on your on your ten gold, she gives a little bit more. Oh. Of her so own. Of her own. Yeah. For that promotion. Yeah. She's just investing in them as an asset. Uh-huh. Once they turn around, I'm sure she'll be back here to collect taxes. I mean, she's mayor now, basically. Good, good show. <laughs> good show. She yeah. bought the town. And so off to the east, you guys fly more. Um, yeah. See if we can pick up any... Um, I mean, I'm sure if they're a large force that there will be tracks um, and more well, evidence of where they are. There are tracks. There, yeah, there are. There's a a beaten path, uh, so to speak. Um, and again, within another few miles, you can see more smoke, um, more more ten, well, tens of miles, but you can see more smoke, uh, larger smoke than before. And Rich you can see as you free, We're gathering up what mm-hmm. riches they can find. Yeah, there in this town, there are uh, four. Uh, large tree-like pillars that have been set up and burnt to a crisp with bodies that are charred and remains that stay. um, The charred remains have bits of it that have been ripped off, legs, arms. It's good eating here. Any sign of the, uh, the black dog army that did this? Um... There are some. You, you, first glance, you don't see many people. In fact, you you almost see uh, none as you fly up. Um, Jesse, you see uh, amidst the smoke, uh, you hear a scream, um, and you you see three men pulling a woman out of a a house. Uh, I still got one left. Wheel around and land right in front of them. Who are you? Your superior officer. We ain't got for that You do now. Except for wild, and you don't look like wild. Is Gentlemen. it possible for me to surprise him somehow, like leap from my bird on top of him? Uh, sure. About how high up is your bird? Well, I would have been near to Jesse. I didn't recall... Does it make sense? Because I didn't specify what my action was. You were kind of narrating everything there. Would I be sitting next to Jesse on my bird? Huh? Huh? Jesse's the only one that's landed. What do you want to do? I want to leap from my bird on top of the guy. Right, and I'm asking you how high up you're leaping from. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 feet? 
Good, All good. Right. Call. I'm, I'm gonna. I want to ensure ensure the landing, so I want to drop from ten feet, like right on top of him. Sure, I will. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna just leap from the saddle and land on top of him and catch him by surprise. Would that be a a, a stealth check? No, 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 I'm going to give you the surprise round. Right now I'm thinking in my head whether I'm going to give you disadvantage on the attack with an extra 1d10 worth of damage if you hit, or if it's just a regular attack and there's no extra damage from your height fall. Well, um, a jump check usually requires an acrobatics check just to avoid biffing it hard. Mm -hmm. So probably you should ask me to do an acrobatics check and that would probably <laughs> determine the outcome. Based off of what happens on the acrobatics check, I'm pretty sure you could think of exactly what's supposed to... Sure. Roll, roll acrobatics. All righty. I will. I got a nine. <laughs> nine! That's exactly terrible. what happened. Nine. <laughs> um, you, you jump from your saddle and land amidst the... Uh, the, the three of them, you, 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 know, you, you don't land amidst them. You land to the outside of one as you, you go to, to thump him, um, and your, uh, your attack. Yeah, I, I land on my feet You're, and don't just, take damage, but I don't hit him. Right, exactly. I right. land right next to him. Right. Because I think that makes the most sense because my jump wasn't accurate enough in order to, like, make it to my advantage. But it wasn't a spectacular well, fail to the point where I look absurd doing what I just did. And I just kind of, well, like, from the saddle. and you, Yeah, you hit, you hit it with a uh, one of those underworld, like, knee, like, ground stomp things. <laughs> you fall from right. the sky like a, like a hero. <laughs> <laughs> that that you I look at him just intensely like that was supposed to flatten you. I'm kind of <laughs> kind of embarrassed that didn't work. Roll initiative. Oh balls! I got six. Twenty-six. The initiative appears to be the one thing I can roll. <laughs> you can roll consistently. Do you have advantages with awareness? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, it gives you plus five to initiative. Oh, man. That's good. And you can never be surprised. And you don't... Nobody gets advantage against you when they're hidden. Which I think... I mean, rogues have to have advantage on you to sneak attack, right? Or they have to be ganging up on you with a friend. Right. So if a rogue were to gang up on you with a friend, he'd still be able to so sneak. sneak I was going to say, otherwise that makes that feat kind of overly powerful. It's pretty good. It eliminates most of a rogue's advantage over you, which is the class that's probably the most dangerous to a wizard. Yeah, that is true. A fighter? Not that dangerous to a wizard. Hold person, motherfucker. Shut up. Sit down for a second while I educate you. <laughs> All right, so well, these three thugs are going to kind of make their way to, to attack you. Jesse, you landed your bird right in their presence. Um, one of them is holding um, the woman, uh, a buxom lass who's got a, a fairly curvy disposition, but doesn't, you know, doesn't make her any less frightened at, at these men. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to look at the lead thug play fire across, or, yeah, just grasp a handful of flame, stare him down and say, you really want to do this, it's not going to end well. And can I intimidate him? Mm -hmm. Roll intimidate? Yes! Uh, 18. <laughs> Two fistfuls yeah, he, of flames. He, this is gonna suck. His eyes go wide. 
This is seriously going to suck. He, if he doesn't melt you, I will slice you in half. Uh, a mage. Wait. Uh, he looks very uncomfortable at his at his two buddies, and he's he he he's not. He, you can see the fight. The will to fight kind of goes right out of him. Uh, if you want the last, you can have her. Where we were just finished anyways. We wasn't gonna do nothing. You know that 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 yeah. you couldn't do yourself. I swear. <laughs> well, let's just sit down then, and we can all have a nice cup of tea. You know, do something really no, cultured I, I and pleasant me and the together. Boy should go. Me, I me said, and sit the down. Should... <laughs> sit down now. <laughs> he says, "We need to question at least one of you." I look at Tommy. I just shrug. Uh, a volunteer's tribute. <laughs> and the other two can go and you'll stay and chat with us? Uh, wait, no, 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 I'm a, I wanted to leave. <laughs> I incinerate the other two on the spot. <laughs> uh, Good choice. Uh... They have an opportunity to act before I go. Do they give up their turn? If, uh... Yeah, Jesse, they're, they're, intimidated. they're cowed enough not to attack. Okay. Um, or at least the main guy is. Yeah, I, I tell him to sit down and we should chat. Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, on my turn... Uh, I ready an, an action to uh, attack them if they should should rethink their their decision. That's all I do. Uh huh. The the guy lets go of the girl and kind of pushes him towards you guys. Well, here he said you could have her, and kind of motion her off. Go on your way. You're not going to want to see this. <laughs> see, see what? What, 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 what would she have to see? It's your turn. She's going away. So yeah, she runs off, gentlemen. She runs, she runs back. And what were your names again? I didn't catch them. Uh, my, my name's Biggs. This here's Wedge. <laughs> <laughs> That's Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so big. Where's the rest of your company? Uh, they they marched on ahead. They they had uh, pressing business. The boss said. What are you gentlemen doing here that you aren't with them? Uh, I just we came back for supplies. You know, armies need supplies. Does one of them look like their just clothes would fit me? What? Does one of them look like their clothes would fit me? Their black um, Over your plate? Do you have plate on? I have half plate, yeah. Yeah, they... Um, they're kind of decked out in leather armor and stuff like that. I mean, some of them got cloaks and... Uh, you know, interesting. Right, they're they, light. They, they're infantry. pretty. They're light infantry, oh. so I would stand out as heavy infantry. Uh huh. Do they have any markings, yeah. insignia, anything unifying about them? Uh, they have a uh, a small patch on a cloak that they wear that has a, a dog's head and a broom, uh, encrossed. So dog's head, broom. Okay. I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd do very good infiltrating the group of them. Uh, I say we just uh, tie up these guys and uh, and go and approach the uh, the emplacement. Leave behind Sarsha and Rusty, and uh, we go and deal with the black dogs ourselves. Okay. Let's at least take their cloaks so we don't immediately stand out. Sure. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Uh, just, just you know discreetly. I think that's wise. Well, well, you guys, you guys want our cloaks? What? Yeah, give me your yeah, clothes. Yeah, give them to us. 
uh, 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 here. Take them. Thank you. Now hold out your hands. <laughs> Start binding them. Yeah. I, t well, I, help, I help Barnabas tie them up. Well, what are you going to do with us? We we're didn't just, do nothing. We're just going to leave you here. Hey, you should feel lucky. We're going to kill everybody else. You guys are going to get to live. Shut up. We just came back for supplies. They got. They only got supplies for themselves, those those greedy bastards. You're right. I'm, I'm sure some of the locals will find you and take care of you. Yeah, as fellow humans in need. Yeah, just like what, you took care of them. What, what do you mean, like... You just gonna leave us here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I oh. uh, after finish tying them up, I hand the rope over to uh, over to the girl that they uh, that they were uh, that they were holding oh. on to that they were uh, about to accost, and I. You, you can see she's returned out of the house with uh, a knife and a, and a a frying pan in her hands. <laughs> Hopefully, the other villagers there as well. Yeah, she's got she's got a uh, you can tell that she's uh, cut free. Her father is is now behind her as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, I hand I hand over the bindings to to them and say, well, you gentlemen have a good day. We're gonna go and uh, kill your boss. Yeah. Uh, you, you What's don't his name, by the way? Huh? What's his name, by the way? I said his name is Wild. Wild. Wow. He's the new new guy, right? Yeah, he, he's a scary fella. Yeah, he when did you take command? Uh, just a winter ago. <laughs> just walk in, walked in and took over. <laughs> we was all taken from the same prison. I've seen him. All right. He just cut that other guy up without even moving, it seemed. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for all your help. Have a lovely day. So, yeah. Don't, 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 don't just gotta leave us here. <laughs> don't leave us here. No, don't leave us here. <laughs> <laughs> Mount up and fly off with your single mind. I take off after Barnabas, ignoring the screams of the bandit. I uh, look to him and I say, uh, you know, based off of what he said, that kind of eliminates any hopes that I had of challenging Wild to one-on-one -on -one combat for leadership of the Black Dogs. I'm pretty sure he would uh, trash me one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I feel like we need to separate him off or catch him unawares somehow. If the two, we don't want two of us swarmed. If the two of us ganged up on Wild, we might be able to take him, even if he had some lackeys backing him up. I don't I'm not sure about going into this though. He's surrounded by a whole bunch of psychotic killers. It might go south for us really fast. Exactly. Is what could we do to lure him out of the rest of his camp? Well, Thing is, is he won leadership of the Black Dogs by single combat. So, I mean, it sets up the stage precisely for me to come in there and be a badass. But all of a sudden, I don't even, I've got full spell slots and everything. All of a sudden, I don't feel like a super badass. Call me, call me crazy. Yeah. No, that seems smart. Um, it seems like yeah, well, there must be something we can do. Set up some kind of trap that we can lure him out into. Well. Uh, Sure, I'll have some. Uh, we should... Uh, the black dogs are only going to respond to being direct. Trying to trick them isn't probably going to pay off for us, this thing. We don't have that type of skill set. If you could... If you had spells that could do it, that would change things, but... Uh, but we don't have the deceitful traits that... Uh, well, I mean, if we could send some kind of a message, if we had something to offer them or some reason to parlay with him directly. We don't have to keep up the deception. We just have to peel him off from the rest of his group. Because tr trying to ambush him in the middle of his... Okay, here's an idea. I tried to, I tried to challenge him one-on-one. -on -one. 
Okay. You watch from a distance from Crowback. When he tries to double cross me, which he's certain to, he's almost certain to, he's going to call in the rest of the guys to come in and attack me, you just fireball them from a safe distance from exactly 200 feet away. Much more. That would level the playing fields. That would allow then that would take care of the the psych the the black dogs and get them to have pause to attack us once you unload a fireball on their asses. Uh, and then from that point on, you'd be free to assist me uh, fighting wild. Hmm. Yeah, that could work. If we could intimidate the group of them enough that they wouldn't jump in. If we hit them with an overwhelming amount of force, we might be able to do that. That means this plan means me going in by myself, though. This is yeah, the one that seems... trick. The one. I mean, we could walk in together and do the same thing from Basically, on the ground. It's true, except you won't have the aerial advantage. But if we really get screwed, I can cast invisibility on both of us, and we can cut and run. You go. Okay, let's let's walk in and just chal and just see how big their balls really are. Yeah, I'll see if he'll accept a challenge. As yeah. we as we start heading off from this second village, do we see the coastline or anything on the horizon? Or um... oh yeah, you you start to see uh, the mountains peter off into to the coast uh, of a great ocean. Mists mm -hmm. roll in from there. there. Is there anything evidence of like what objective the black dogs are headed towards? Uh, they're you just can see uh, the are they just horizon. rampaging? Um, let me just try to pull up a picture. Uh -huh. I mean, we could also go and see... I mean, if that gnome was trying to contact us, maybe he has some important piece of information that we should try to glean before... Green tea, please. We go pummeling into God knows what. Right. And one of us needs to have some charisma. <laughs> That's not our style. <laughs> not our style. We don't do we don't do the subtle soft route. We, we do hard and fast. <laughs> Blow them up, knock them down. Uh. Well, uh, Tacitus isn't uh, isn't doesn't like subtlety. Like ultimately. He, experienced a fall of, from power because of people who were more subtle than him. Right. So this is... Uh, you can see a village off on the coast that has been built into the uh, the coastline. You see that? A pretty coastal village there? With yeah. cars? The divination I did on where the gnome was, did it have any indication of where specifically he was? in this community? No. Okay. Um, but we could do, like, a locate person or something on him. I think... Now. Let's not worry about the gnome, because he's a, uh, he's a foretold person in your timeline, so it's basically inevitable that you'll run into him. It seems like if he's here... And the black dogs are here, though, and he's trying to reach out to us. Maybe he has some relevant piece of information he can share with us before we go mm. diving into their encampment. Of course, every moment I want to find him. Every moment that we waste is more uh, more <laughs> villagers who are put to the sword. Hmm. Is that you hitting buttons? This is the microwave going. Oh, okay. All right. I thought it was security or something. Am I going to get blown up? 
<laughs> yes. Right. You think we should just go straight to the Black Dog's encampment then? I feel like let's just walk up straight. The thing is, the black dog guys like the black dogs don't respect anything except force. So let's just walk straight up to them and show them how enormous our nards are. And uh, <laughs> this sounds a lot like our last encounter. <laughs> <laughs> let's go find him. We're definitely going to find decision made. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna go find their leader. Go into his tent and stab him in the face. <laughs> just fucking stab him to death. That is my plan. I'm sorry that all of my plans are the same. For the wizard, I'm the fighter. I'll just put that forward. Oh that you're the wizard, I'm the fighter. So <laughs> give give me a choice of what to do, and I'm gonna tell us that we should just fight things. We'll do that tomorrow. Today, let's find the gnome. <laughs> Today will whiz things. Uh, like I, once again, I, I defer to your better judgment on this one because uh, I don't think my su my skills are ideally suited for for this challenge, like the last one. Okay. Yeah. Make our way towards the town then and set down there. Well, let me let me say that the town is a little bit uh, more actively being pillaged than the other two. And instead right. of seeing smoke, you see fire. Uh, and you hear screams as people are corralled towards uh, ships uh, that are on the coast. The mm -hmm. black dogs are loading their supplies uh, yeah. onto the ships. Those and bastards. You see, uh, chains of women and children being... Uh, forced onto boats. Hmm. Well, Tacitus, where do you think the head is? Well, I think the head is on those boats. I think if I can land on the boats, then I can cause enough distraction. Uh, you ought to keep a distance. Uh, the worst thing that they can bring to bear against you is slings and arrows, F, as long as you remain on the crow. I can land down there on the docks and the pier and start fucking all sorts of things up. I'll put myself on I'll put myself on a boat where they can't surround me. Okay. Sounds good. I can even just land up in the rigging. Yeah! Just perch on top of, like, the mast with your crow or something. That's <laughs> perfect. And I'll land on the deck. This just got awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's the plan. We fly in. Right in. I bomb these guys. Uh, you can see that your entrance takes many of the thugs by surprise. Uh, but one that stands on the helm uh, with a large, broad face and a nose that, to match, very apish in his sphygmiomony. Sphygmiomony? Fig, fig, I don't know how you say that word. Sphygmiomony. <laughs> His, uh, his face looks like it's an ape's face. <laughs> um, you just made up that word right now. You just made that up. I did not. It's a real word. You just, you just made up that word. Speak me out to me. I'm saying it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, his, uh, he, he distinctly, as he has that distinct, like, half-cocked grin on his face that he's just kind of, like, watching everybody get out of his ship, and he's just like, yeah. Yeah, this is what he lives for, too, as well, clearly. This is my shit. This is my... How pick. many people are... <laughs> how many people are above decks on the ship? Uh, there seems to be... Um, at least... Um, seven thugs on top ship. Hmm. Um, and there's at least <coughs> another... Uh, 10 or 15 or so down on the docks that are all kind of guiding the uh, this parade of slaves into the uh, the lower galleys. Um, as I land up in, in the rigging, I just firebolt the gangplank to break the connection to the dock. Sure. Uh, you throw a firebolt uh, at the gangplank and it catches on fire. Um, 
soon to burn out. Uh, Very good. The, uh, so it's, it's not enough to destroy it? Uh, I'd say no. It's enough to catch it ablaze. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Uh, otherwise, it would have just kind of like destroyed your torch, if you think about it. I bring my stick out. <laughs> oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I assume I have some control. I can turn up or turn down the nozzle. Oh, are you a sorcerer? Do you have better magic? Get out of here. You're just a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Throttle it up or down. Um, yeah, I mean, if you cast it as a higher... Well, can you... Are you... I mean, it's a cantrip. It does 2d10 damage. Yeah. So I, I can just, roll against it, roll to hit, and roll damage. Sure. I well, if you, you either hit it automatically and it catches fire, or you can roll to hit with a chance of failure and the possibility of breaking it completely. Uh, I'll roll to hit with a chance of failure. Yeah. Uh, 19 to hit. Uh, I guess that'll hit. Uh, 12 points of damage to the gangplank. 12 plus nothing? Okay, 12... You blow a you blow a sizable hole in the gangplank, and it holds on by just a, a bare thread of metal of wood. If it if someone mm -hmm. steps on it, it'll surely break. Okay. Um, but your firebolt causes the uh, remaining thugs on uh, on deck to to grab their swords out and uh, assume aggressive positions around you. Uh, Tacitus, it looks like we have their attention. Yeah, I, I land at the prow of the ship, dismount my crow, and just uh, stand there with my sword and shield, looking toward, beckoning the, towards the thugs that are all uh, enslaving the population. Sure. Uh, save man. I just point at the first dude, and I just look at him, you, sir, are no gentleman. <laughs> You must walk away. <laughs> We're not here to negotiate. Just <laughs> not here to negotiate. You must let my people go. Um. Just a second. And you're speaking to uh, this wild. Yeah, wild's right there at the prow, right? Yes. Oh yeah. He's not at the prow. He's, uh, I guess, yeah. The prow is the, the back part. Oh, that. Oh, okay. He's at the stern. He's, he's, he's by the, the helm. Of the ship. Yeah, he's by the. Mm -hmm. He's by the hell. Okay, I'm going to fight all the way through your lackeys first, and then I'm going to come disembowel you. You can stay right there, buddy. Okay, I made this map really fast, so I apologize. Mm -hmm. But here is our ship. And I'm ready to start doing some swashbuckling. All right, can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, TK. I got that. Whatever. TK, you're over here. And we have thugs. Oh, no, I don't want to equal. Oh. I'm going to push this bullshit. Oh, those are good thugs. That's a very fireballable cluster of thugs there, Jesse. I'm going to incinerate this whole ship. Yeah, this, this, they're all going down. Well, wait a second. Are there any innocent bystanders standing in the uh, in the radius of the fireball? In the radius? 
It, it, the, you're, there, are, there are no civilians top deck right now. They're all being loaded into... In fact, there are people on the gangplank when you shot it, Jesse. Are you sure you want to... <laughs> yes, it's okay. They just go to plop into the water. Yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> I don't... Aim, I aim not for people. <laughs> if they twist their ankle, it's not a big deal. There's Wild. Yeah. That mofo. Actually, I think that two of them are, are back here. That makes more sense. Yeah, that does make sense. All right. All right. So, Tori, you're the wizard man in the front. And mm -hmm. Jesse... You woman. shall not pass. You're this woman, I'm kid. The Valkyrie. Yeah, you're the Valkyrie. Oh, hi, Alfred, man. What? You want, me, you want me to put you on the map, Jesse, as the Valkyrie person? Yeah, put me as the Valkyrie. All right. Well, you're high above this this guy right here. So I'm gonna, move, I'm gonna move you off the map a little bit, so you're you're okay. you're just above yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will actually make some some masks. Masks. Yeah. I have no idea how ships work. <laughs> <laughs> how do you ship, John? How do you ship? I ship. I ship schooner style. <laughs> I take it those are stairs on the left and right, and then there's yeah. like a captain's quarters underneath. Right. Okay. So here's our ship. Fabulous. Jesse, you are now right here. Okay. Excellent. How high up? Uh, we'll say twenty feet. Okay. Perfect. All right. Uh. Roll initiative? Did you guys already do that? Woo! <laughs> I got five balls. Uh, Fifteen. The thugs go first. And they move to swarm you on the, uh, on the prowl. Mm -hmm. You have a speed of thirty. And they, uh, so, um, just trying to see something. So, 30, is this guy there? Thirty gets them all within distance of you. Mm -hmm. only, only two can seem to attack you head on right now. <laughs> now the other ones take up positions. On the outside. Uh huh. And these two are going to try to shoot at you, um, Jesse, All from right. down here. So these two are going to try to attack you with swords up close, Tori. And the three of them are going to try to shoot you with heavy crossbow. Um, you know. yeah. uh, if I was smart, I'd probably cast Mage Armor on the approach. Well, that was if you were smart, though. Yeah, that, that's, retro, that's pretty retroactive. Uh, mm -hmm. The mace, two mace attacks coming at you, Tori, plus four. Right. So a 16 and 11 don't hit. Uh, they make two melee attacks. So the 22 right here will attack, will hit. It's 22? Um, he gets a plus four, so... It doesn't do too high of damage, though. Mm -hmm. It does five damage to you. Uh, the other three only get one shot. But they all are going to try to shoot you with a heavy crossbow with a plus two. None of them hit. All their crossbow bolts are easily defended by your uh, your shield. Yep. Um, the other two will take crossbow bolt at Jesse. No hits. The rigging is too intense. Uh, TK. Is Jesse... Was Tory oh, first? Jesse. That's me. Yeah, I acted the five spot. Okay. Mark, 
Barnabas Jones. Um, I think I'm probably. I think haste has a range. I think I'm just gonna cast haste on on Tacitus. It seems like a good opportunity to. Okay. I just love double it. check that. Yes. Thirty. Oh, it's thirty feet. So I actually do have to get closer to him in order to cast it. Mm -hmm. Um. You're yeah, within. Can I just fly you? I'm not within thirty feet of you, oh. including the vertical distance. Yeah, it's 39. You're about 40 foot away from him in terms of horizontal distance. You could yeah, move maybe into can... pillar as a move action. Yeah, I'll fly into some of the lower rigging and, and cast haste on him. Okay. So you get your guy, you get your crow, roll animal handling. Yeah. You successfully uh, maneuver your crow to a place that you can cast haste while uh, um, while sufficiently flying through the rigging. Okay. Um, roll. Uh, you have to roll anything. You cast haste. Yeah. TK, you have haste. Okay, you're gonna love this. First, my haste action is to shove the first guy over the over the prow oh, the prow of the ship. All right, roll an attack on him. Got a ten plus two, ten plus six, so sixteen total to shove him. Uh, roll strength. Eighteen. Uh, Get him. Not seeing my roll. I think I rolled a ten and a three right there. So you you easily push uh, which one, top one or bottom one? I started with the top one. So he. <laughs> what? And then I use shield mastery to as a bonus action. So that first that, that first one was my haste action. Then yeah. as my bonus action. I'm going to use shield mastery to plink the guy, the bottom guy, with my shield and try to shove him off as well. Roll an attack. I use lucky reroll. <laughs> okay. I got a twenty total. All right, roll strength. I got a nine or ten uh, total. It's opposed, and I roll a three. So you. Uh, <laughs> shove him off as well. Uh, apparently Chris Lundquist responded yes to our our broadcast today. So we'll awesome. see. If, we'll see if Chris joins us. <laughs> so <I'll> plink. <laughs> <laughs> and then I move up into the center, towards into base contact with uh, these guys here. One of one or both of them. That one there. Yep. And then I'm going to do as a normal. Normal action, I'm going to do my blade ward and then end my turn. Okay. I just stand there dramatically in the center of all three of the remaining five guys. Um, okay. These guys are going to take their, uh, their swings on you, their multi-attack. This guy above you's got a mace. He's going to try to swing his mace at you. The other one's got an axe, and they're both going to try to rip into you. 21 armor right now. Uh, looks like the first one got a 19. The second one got a 17. Haste made me narrowly dodge that first attack. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they, they both get two attacks. So the second one still they they still not high enough. The four of the the two of them send four attacks your way. Blah, 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 blah. And you're just you you're matrixing them. Just you know, yep. too fast for you. Oh, and I'm spilling my tea everywhere. <laughs> and then the <laughs> last one is gonna send a crossbow bolt up towards Jesse. Does sixteen hit? Yeah, it hits. The six damage. Roll concentration. And the DC is equal to the damage? 
half the damage. Ten plus half the damage. So you must roll okay. higher. And do I get any bonus on it? What do I apply um, to it? For all your intelligence Perfect. plus in. Do I get to apply proficiency as well? Let's make a constitution saving throw to maintain your concentration. Oh. Interesting. Um, so. Also, you didn't roll your divination rolls for the day. Yeah, I did. Uh, I got a 12 and 11. You rolled those today? I, I rolled them. Yeah, I rolled them like while we were flying or something. Okay. A little bit earlier. Um, okay, so I take six points of damage and roll DC 13 Constitution with a plus two. Uh, that's really important. Oh, fuck me. Um, actually, I got an 11. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I actually, yeah, I'm going to use one of my portent rolls to succeed on that. So use one of your portent rolls. Replace that with 11 plus two is 13. Yeah. You, you have foreseen this arrow and you... you Steal yourself. You see yourself stealing yourself. Right? <laughs> Last as long as it can. Uh, oh. However, these other two who haven't acted yet also try to to get position and and send more crossbow bolts your way. Uh, they'll run down the stairs and shoot at you. <laughs> who is that? Uh, both miss with fives. Oh, thank God. <laughs> See, you're glad you have that pink rhomboid now. <laughs> yeah, I seriously am. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot that concentration was constitution as well. Jesse guy. Well, yeah. The, the, the man at the front of the ship watches as you cut down these, these thugs, these prisoners, and just kind of laughs. <laughs> uh, Wild's a total douche. Yeah. Um and you uh he he says to his thugs, Stop fighting them. They are too strong for you idiots. It shall be my pleasure to rip their bones from their bodies and to pick my teeth with them. It's a bold claim, Wild. You better be able to back it up. Well, the thugs haven't uh, made a move to to disengage. In fact, they they just fought you. So if you if you felt the need to to strike out at them, you'd still be within reason. Try to get wild on your turn, Jesse. Is it, is it my turn? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm just going to go for wild. Um, I'm going to cast blindness on him. Hmm. Blind that um, motherfucker. He rolls DC 17 con. You still there, Jaeger? Yep, sorry. Uh, he goes blind. He gets to repeat the saving throw on each of his turns. Rah! And I'm done. Filthy, annoying wizards! You blinded him? Yeah. Oh. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay. It's now my turn. It is. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's agonizingly out of my range. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to run up the stairs, too. Yeah, are these guys going to stop me? Or are they going to take attacks of opportunity if I just blitz past them? 
They will take a tax opportunity if you blitz past them. Okay. So first, I'm still hasted, right? Yes. Haste action. Going to bump the yeah. top guy. Okay. Roll attack. You're going to just try and shove him right over the edge. <laughs> We're sad. 14 to hit him. 14 will hit. I only got a 5 on my strength check. You got a 14. Okay. My shield mastery bonus action. I'm going to try and plink the same guy over the edge. Alright. Oh. Oh. I, I, uh, <laughs> roll dexterity. <laughs> Don't fumble that. 20. Uh, you make to push past, you make to push him, and him anticipating your action switches places with you, and you almost push yourself right off the edge. Mm -hmm. But catch yourself on the banister in time not to. So that was my haste action and my bonus action for my normal action. I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to chop him with two melee attacks. Okay. I crit the shit out of him, and then I get a 7 plus 8. I get a 15 to hit him. Do I hit him twice? Uh, your crit might kill him, so let's do your roll damage first. So first I crit him for 17 points of damage. Well, he's still handy. And then I hit him for another 14 points of damage. 17 plus 14. 31 yep. total? Hit him for 31 points of damage. Um, it's one shy, but I'm going to say you slice this guy uh, in half for 31 damage. I think he takes enough to kind of, if not die outright, he, he literally just gets chopped once and then chopped twice, and he falls <laughs> to, his, to the ground crying in pain. He pretends to be dead. He's a one-hit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Please. <laughs> hey, let me do this. Yeah, that would be pretty, pretty devastating. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh fuck! Oh fuck! He went from thirty-two I'm life. Ready to die. <laughs> he went from thirty-two life to one in a single turn. Yeah. These thugs are tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Jesse went. Tori went. Push those guys over the side. Yeah, they, they kind of they kind of start drifting out further. Uh, the other thugs seeing you cut down the uh, the guy and hearing their their boss kind of tell them to to desist, uh, kind of move uh, to out to uh, the entrance to desist. Yeah. Fabulous. And there you are. Uh, the blinded uh, captain uh, cries out, Ah! You think that just vision will keep you alive? Filthy. Filthy peasants. He uh, rolls high. Gets an 18. Passes. Actually, he's no longer blind, huh? Wipes the, the so blind it's at the end of his turn. Eyes. But that's his turn. Okay. And then it passes back to my turn, then. Mm -hmm. I'll do scorching ray. Um. Do we want to? Do we, we want to? Finish this fight, is that right? I'm down for finishing. Uh, yeah. I'm down for it. Okay. Do you uh, have a timeline? No, I'm free all day. We can play forever. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we should make Jesse a dark heresy character after this. Uh, oh, yeah. that would be, uh, I need to read. I, uh, yeah, we can, okay. It's okay, Jesse. It's really not as hard as I make it sound. It's a really, really dense yeah, Hard to read, but the game is easy to play. Yeah. Yeah, and you can run me through like the archetypes or whatever. Okay. Um, I'm gonna cast Scorching Ray on him. 
Um, I'm going to make three ranged attacks against him. Scorching Ray. Uh, roll an attack. Um, or is it it's three attack? separate rays. So the lowest is a 16. Lowest is a 16, and that shall hit the bandit captain. Okay, so he gets hit by three rays for 2d6 a pop, so he takes 66. Ah! 18 points of fire damage. Wow, that's you are stronger draw. than you look! He <laughs> <laughs> watches like half of his face gets like burnt, and he just kind of laughs it off. Mm. Not clearly not human. Um, Tori. Uh, on my turn, now that I'm clear of uh, all of these guys that might uh, molest me while I'm casting, I'm going to hit him with a Melf's Acid Arrow right in the face. Okay. Melt the rest of his face off. You have to roll for that, or is it dexterity? Uh, it's a uh, intelligence attack for me. Right, sorry. So you attack, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a spell save. Yep, no spell save. If I hit, I do full damage, and then there's melting afterwards. If I miss, I do half damage, and then no melting. So, uh, so here we go. Come on, big money, big money. Melt's Acid Arrow, 20 to hit him. That'll hit. I do, I believe it's 4d4. I will look up Melt's Acid Arrow before I uh, roll it. Mel's Acid Arrow is 4d4, first turn, and then the next turn is uh, 2d4. So. I melt him for 9 points of damage this round. Go ahead and just roll the extra damage now. Oops, sorry. Hold on. Oh, that was good, too. You better get him some high damage. If you I know. I rolled oh, really wow. high on the one. So uh, the second roll is only 6 points of damage. Okay. He thinks that as his turn starts, and you see him like, ah, the, 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 the melting of his face and body has started. You can see, like, just hair is singeing away from him. And he, he smiles at you and says, this is going to be fun. Uh, on, on my, as the end of my turn, I just want to move closer to him and end my turn one square away from him. So you want to end your turn here? As close as to him as I can get. I thought I'd be still ten feet away from him, though. Yeah, you, you have to run around up the stairs. What's your speed? Six squares. You're right. Via, via my ruler tool, you're right here. You're not screen sharing anyone? Am I not? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, sir. Based on my rule, you're right there on the stairs. So. His turn. Uh, he'll close the distance. And he will. Uh, he, he bears no weapons. He's not even wearing a shirt. Hmm. He, he sits there all. Um, uh, crazy eyed, and he looks at you with that that odd uh, that odd smile that he has. You know, yeah. look at him smiling at you, <laughs> and he uh, he goes forth to kind of punch and uh, and attack you with um with fists that feel like uh, mallets. And he will roll two attacks. One gets a 16, the other gets a 24 on you. Uh, the 24 hits. Yeah. And his... Oh, God. 
His fist does three damage to you. Oh, I lucked out. Or four damage, sorry. Four. I'm down yeah. to two life. Oh, it looks like he makes. Oh, he makes, he makes three attacks. No, no, no. Oh, he follows up with a headbutt, huh? Sure. Kaboosh! <laughs> uh, gets a 17. That doesn't hit Not you. About to hit. I have no. 21 armor right now, motherfucker. Yeah, he smiles. This is going to be a good fight. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. He still thinks he has a chance. Uh, Jesse's turn. Jesse, you gonna stay in that rigging up there? Uh, will I have to roll any kind of animal handling or anything else for concentration if I stay up here? Uh, not for concentration. You'll have to roll animal handling to get to a different post. If I want to move. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna stay where I am. Okay. Um... I'll cast another Scorching Ray on him. So, 3D, 3 ranged attacks. Oh, one of which is a critical failure. Mm. Um, the lowest to hit is a 16. 16 hits. Okay, uh, so he gets roll, hit twice. Roll your damage first. Do you seriously have a plus 9 for your spell attack? Yeah. Holy I mean, it's in You rolled plus 6d6? Per... I thought it was 2d6 per arrow. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. It is 2d6 per... Oh, oh that's brutal. Uh, 10 points of damage. Damn it. You had rolled right the first time, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. It's my own damn fault. Uh, oh, it's less than roll, half. As much. Roll an attack on Tori. Uh, 15 plus 9? Balls. Your, yeah. your natural 1 hits him square in the face. Oh. <laughs> he takes 3 points of damage. Yes! <laughs> okay, <laughs> <one of us. laughs> sorry, sorry about that. 4. Friendly I'm at, fire. <laughs> I'm at 49 life. Alright. Uh, 2k. Okay. Now that I'm up close with Wild, I'm just gonna try to give him everything that I've got. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm going. He doesn't seem to hit hard, so I'm gonna give him uh, two attacks plus my uh, plus my haste attack plus a second wind. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. Try to knock him down. Damn, I got a. Uh, Fourteen doesn't hit. Twenty-five. That'll hit. And an eight. The natural one. Yeah. I slash him for fourteen or er, thirteen points of damage. You slash him for thirteen, and mm -hmm. then on your final hit, you watch as your sword becomes embedded as you swing too hard, and it becomes embedded in the rail oh. of the. I will I will spend my second lucky reroll of the day to reroll that then. Okay. I I that that uh, if five is still a miss, but it is not it is not losing my sword, so I, mm -hmm. that is preferable to me. Okay. Uh, you can see that your your attacks are doing some serious damage. This guy has gashes open up on his chest, and you know his face is half melted, and but he just continues to have that. Uh, a outrageous smile and that that deep throaty laugh. <laughs> He's not even concerned. No. You say you second wind. Oh, uh, and then I second wind. Yes, I go eight plus eleven. I heal nineteen life. He uh, he's gonna try to grab you and throw you. I'm back to sixty one. I'm back sixty one hit points. You can feel his like strength almost like billow out of him as he grabs uh, your body, and he's gonna try to oppose your strength roll. So he, he grabs you, and he rolls opposed strength. Oh, 
Oh, I got a four. Oh. Seven. He gets a 13. As strength just seems to, that doesn't seem to fit his body, uh, throws you across the deck. And he uh, he throws you into the, uh, the pillar right there. Ooh. Uh, Boosh! Uh, and you land on the on the ground below. Uh, we'll say that's what two d eight damage. Yeah. Okay. Just making that up. Two damage! Ha! Okay. Bastard! I go to fifty nine. Ah! Uh, let's add strength to that. So we'll just say it's it's seven damage total. Okay. Uh, I go to 54 life. Okay. Uh, and he watches as your body crumples, and he casts a smiley gaze up at you in your, in your crow's nest, Jesse, and all the rigging, and he smiles at you. I'm coming for you, little bird man. This does not end well for you. I've seen it. Come. We'll let Fight you me. leave alive now. <laughs> it is you who shall not be left to leave alive. <laughs> <laughs> Take a deep breath. Yeah, he guess. moves. He he moves towards you, and you're he moves down the stairs. Chuck, okay. chuck, chuck, chuck. I take a deep breath and breathe fire down on him and his hapless ally standing next to him. <laughs> okay. Roll. Is he dexterity? Yeah, they both roll dex. Alright, he rolls dex and gets a one. Oh. His friend rolls dex and gets a 17. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so his friend passes. Not that I think it matters. That's the only one that matters. 32 fire damage to him. Holy shit! And 16 to his friend. The 16 to his friend does about half damage to that guy. He's uh, He had done a full damage to that guy who had been dead. But his, his friend erupts in flames. He's like, Arr! Uh The bandit captain himself uh, is completely caught on fire. And he watches uh, his body uh, crumples and his, his, uh, his smile stays the whole time, though, as his flesh just gets uh, eaten from his bones. And uh, he's, not, he's still got, like, you know, big chunks of flesh, and he's still smiling as his body... Uh, Lizzie well. looks at you and says, <laughs> I haven't felt this alive in a long time. <laughs> and he begins to expand. And you see his skin rebuild. And you see uh, him grow in size. Uh, and he begins to take up much more of the um, cabin or of the, of the land that he used to. Um, in his place, uh, a large, ape-like, furred creature with an eye in the middle of his chest, large teeth, a second mouth, and two eyes in his shoulders appear. Hmm. Let me... Do I know what he is? Uh, you know he's scary as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I like it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. um, he, uh, he looks at you, his body steaming with the transformation. That's cool as hell. Uh, any case... That's horrible. By direct theft. Uh, he stands on the on the middle of the ship and looks at you. 
You have made me shed my feeble mortal body, and I shall face you in this form, and you shall make your demise even more flavorful for me. I look around at his um, cohorts. <laughs> what are they doing? They shit themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they literally shit themselves. <laughs> They have never seen anything like this, and the guy that's on fire next to him uh, literally jumps off the boat. He doesn't. He doesn't wait around. To see, what do. see what happens. He just says, "Get the fuck out of here. I'm I'm out." <laughs> I'm out. The other guys all cower at the other side of the ship. This guy, this guy who's almost dead, like picks himself up. He's like, "I gotta." <laughs> I've still got enough in me to swim. It's fine. And in front of you, you see a giant demon. A large demon. Uh, horrible one. And he's... He lifts his hands as if to attack you. Uh, TK. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to give him a second Malfasted Arrow. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and target him with a second Malfasted Arrow. I'm going to roll to hit. Sorry, I need to go grab another pencil. Mine just oh, gonna... I failed. I'm going to need it. I only do seven points of damage to him. With Malfasted Arrow... Okay. His turn. Yep. He's going to use his. Uh, he's going to use his attacks to um, great advantage against you. Um. He's going to cast first uh, He's going to first cast Power Word Stun on Jesse's Crow. Oh god. I don't think that your bird suffers much of a chance. It's uh, determined by hit points, right? Well, let's see. Uh, I might I might use it against Jesse. That might make more sense. Mm -hmm. What just happened? Power word stun. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, right. You're about to take a spill. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Do you get a save on that? I do not believe so. I believe power word is determined by the number of hit points you currently have. Mm. You speak a word of power that can overwhelm the mind of one creature you can see within range, leaving a dumbfound. Your target has 150 hit points of fury to stun. Oh, yeah. No, the creature must make a constitution saving throw at the end of each of its turns. On a successful save, the stunning effect ends. Oh shit! So I'm gonna be stunned for a while if it's. Oh man! I, I am going to stun you, Jesse. Okay. Um. I yeah. Assume I drop out of <laughs> onto the ground. Yeah. Roll a roll a one d six, and we'll say that that this is one and this is six. A four. Mm-hmm. Alright. So you land. Convenient. Uh, but you also fall 20 feet. So, you take so I take 1d6? 2d6? 1d6? Or is it past the first 10 feet? Um, I'm not sure. It's past the first 10 feet. And it's 1D6. d6, not d10? Oh, you should probably roll that. I shouldn't be rolling my own damage. Yeah, that's fine. You can take the 6 if you want. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm cool with that, Jesse. Cock. Oh. Cock. Right. Uh, it also gets two attacks in addition to its spell. It has a ten foot range mm -hmm. with its giant um, gorilla arms. And it shall attack um, it shall attack you twice, TK. Tacitus. Mm-hmm. Oh, that also means I lose focus on haste. Yeah. Stop. Which means Tori's going to lose his action. Man, maybe I should stop casting haste on you. That's a pretty strong drawback. Concentration? Yeah, it is a strong drawback. But well, the exhaustion it deals on you. Yeah. Uh, he is going to... Um, so is so is Tori exhausted right now? It's not exhaustion. It's just that like he loses all of his actions. Right. So he doesn't get any disadvantage or advantage. Right. To hit. When the spell ends, the target can't move or take actions until after its next turn. Yeah. So no disadvantage or anything. All right. So this is the first attack. It's got a plus nine against TK twenty-seven. Uh, it does uh, minus 90, so <laughs> 13 to damage to me, to you, uh, and you are grappled. And it shall take its second attack to basically punch you in the fist that it has. <laughs> um, so he's gonna he's gonna pull you in to his space, and he's gonna punch you in the face. I don't like this modifier, but I'm gonna guess that a twelve does not hit you. No, it does not. So, um, or do you think he'd have advantage against a grappled creature? I don't know. I don't believe so. I don't think you do. Okay, that's fine. I believe you have advantage on any creature who is grappled by someone else. Can look up conditions here. At yeah, conditions are right at the back here. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. So, Jesse guy, roll saving throw. Tom. <laughs> 13. 13 is oh. Do I know the DC? Uh, DC is 16. Get in there. Okay, so I'm unconscious. Or stunned. Tacitus. You are grappled, and you are unable to take any actions. God. He's grappling both of us? No, you are grappled, and you're unable to take any actions right now. Uh-huh, yeah. I'm and fine. I'm fine. I weren't stunned. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what? Why not? <laughs> He's going to walk. He's going to walk with you. He's going to walk this way. Boom. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's going to try to grapple. He's going to try to grab you, Jesse, too, with his... I mean, does he have any chance of that? I guess he has to hit me. He can make four attacks, and with, uh, with two of them, he can grapple you. But... This is the first one. He can't. He can't grapple you with the second. He can't. He only gets one attack to grapple you because his other hand is already full of a thing. Yeah. So, he gets a d20 plus nine. Apparently plus fifty nine because this thing doesn't know how to fucking do anything. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, but a 28 is going to hit your unconscious body. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. I'm actually, you probably, you probably has that advantage on it. So no, no crit. Uh, and he does 17 points of damage. Okay. And you are also grappled. It has both of you in its in its hands. And it's going to... I'm going to stop my screen share for a second because I want to see you guys just kind of... It's going to go like this. And <laughs> <laughs> just try to smoosh our heads against each other. Yes. Uh, and so I'll just roll two attacks, uh, one on each of you, essentially, to see if any damage is done. Uh, so on Tori, it's going to be a... 26, and on Jesse, it's going to be a 16. Um, yeah, that hits. So, 8 damage to Tori, and 17 damage to Jesse. Okay, I'm unconscious. Oh, that's what happens when you hit full play, Jesse. <laughs> Yeah, I'm at zero, even. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it's my turn. Uh, shit, I use... Damn. I'm all out of second level spells, so I can't Misty Step out of his arms. I can only make attacks with disadvantage. That's all I can do. You can try to escape. You can do athletics or acrobatics to escape. Um, I'm going to try and shock him. That does not give <laughs> disadvantage, right? Uh, no, I think you'd be fine. You're just regular attack. I get a 12 to hit him. It does not work. His hand is very thick with natural armor. And I get a 14 with my bonus action. That's it for my turn. 14 to... No. To just hit him with my sword. No. It's bad. It's his turn. Uh, he is going to throw Jesse's body. Uh, actually, maybe he's going to eat your body. I don't know yet. Well, did I... Let's see. Have I, have I already had my turn? No, I haven't had a turn since he smashed us together. Correct. You um, need to do a death saving throw. Yeah. Pass. You have one success. Then it's his turn. He is going to, um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna, he's gonna open up his giant chest mouth, <laughs> and he's gonna drop you in <laughs> and swallow you whole. I saw this. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is no surprise at all. He just got swallowed like a titan. Uh, Tacitus, uh, you just watched uh, Barnabas disappear. Yeah, he just disappears into this giant maw of this uh, this ape demon creature. Uh, that just kind of look at that guy, you know. <laughs> now he's sitting in the belly of the beast. Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> No, it's from a comic book. And so, um, for the for the time being, Jesse, your guy is uh, not here. Yeah, he's probably right about. <laughs> uh, Tassus, you're still grappled. Um, the uh, so the dead. Demon, the demon holds you out and just laughs. <laughs> You really thought that you could defeat me? <laughs> you will be delicious. I use action surge and I hit him with six magic missiles, two first level spells. All right, do you aim anywhere in particular? Uh, no, just for that great big eye. Sure, the big eye, the big eye. 
So I'm going to do 64 plus 6. Yeah. And hit him for 17 points of damage. Yeah! He That's watches right. his eye... Um, his eye closes in the middle of his chest, and you see as he, like, grasps... He lets you go and kind of grasps his, his, his chest with both of his hands um, as you unload your magic missiles into him. Yeah, just give him a missile barrage. Three missiles from each hand as I action surge. Yeah! And you see his teeth grimace, and he he uh, he re re um, recombobulates himself, and uh, your guy's over here now. He he looks mm -hmm. to you, and it's both of his hands empty. He looks to just want to punch you. Bop bop. He's going to pummel. Two attacks. Plus nine each. Twenty-one? Twenty-one hits. So one hit. Twelve damage. And you are again grappled. I'm at eleven hit points. <laughs> Cock. I'm sorry, All twenty right. I'm at twenty one hit points. Twenty one. Still not dead. Unlike Jesse, who's who is removed, digesting from in the belly of a platinum dragon. So you gotta ask yourself, where, where your, priorities? your priorities lie? Is Are we back still playing? <laughs> Jesse. Yeah. Roll saving throw. Yeah. You have one slipped one step closer to death. <laughs> You can feel just the everything slipping away. Okay. Um, I'm in this thing's uh, hands now, and uh, what's his armor class? I don't know. Probably. You don't know. I don't think I know what his armor He's class is. about 15. Uh, I only have a single first level spell left, so all I'm going to try to do is attack twice with disadvantage. I don't think you get disadvantage. From from being grappled? Correct. I'm just going to stab the shit out of him twice. <laughs> yeah, stab the shit out of him twice. Just stab the shit out of him twice. Oops, I forgot to get rid of my D D4s. Uh, I got a... I got an 18 and a 23. Have you been rolling with disadvantage? Because I saw that 17 and 7. Yeah. Uh, I rolled with disadvantage one time because he had me grappled last time. I assumed that it gave me disadvantage. Not correctly. No, it does not. Your, your speed is zero? Um, does my 18 hit him? Oh, yeah, you're 18 hits. So I hit him twice. I give him two efficient chops of the long sword with Dewdrop. That's a gay name for a sword at all. <laughs> hey, now. Dewdrop's a great name for a sword. It's it's not a gay name at all for an elf, but for a human, it's a pretty gay name. Hey, now. Hey, now. <laughs> Even for an elf, that's just it. <laughs> Dewdrop's a great name for a sword. Bastion sword, dude. Wait, if you don't want your Dewdrop, we can take it away. We can get you a new sword. <laughs> my first attack does 8 points of damage, and my second does 13. I do 21 points of damage to him total. All right. Uh, you plunge your sword twice into his hand. You can see, like, just gashes are, are opening up that are that are blood is spewing out, black blood. All over the white fur of his body. My friend, you son of a bitch! <laughs> uh, he's still got, he still has a hold on you, uh, and he's going to take your body and just chuck you into the wall of the captain's quarters. <laughs> yeah, he's watching the whole thing. Oh, hi, Chris! I know you probably can't talk back, but hello. Is Chris watching? 
he is watching. He's quite enjoying. He sent a text he's been saying, giving. Do he's drop. been giving me his commentary as he's been watching this go down. He's like, this is actually hilariously awesome. Oh, <laughs> uh, and the giant thing throws you, bah! and you land into the uh, the cabin's uh, quarter. He does a 17 on oh. the attack. Um, so I don't know if that actually hits you. So if you said 17 damage. He, I have 19 armor class. He can suck a dick. Yeah, I think that he just throws you, and your in your armor absorbs the uh, the brunt of the uh, Cla- clatter to the. <laughs> yeah. Um, kaboosh! So here you are. Flings me against the wall of the cabin. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he's going to, uh, with his his other attacks, basically run up on you and mm-hmm. kind of give you the the Agent Smith, the duck da duck da duck da duck da Yeah. The pound, pound me against the wall. Yeah. And he's going to make three attacks. Oh, God. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. He gets a 21, a 17, and a 19. I used my last first level spell to cast shield and deflect all three attacks. Does it give you deflection on all three or per one attack? It gives me plus five to my AC until the start of my next turn. Oh, you bastard. Yeah, I have 24 AC right now. Suck my cock, big, big fat motherfucker. Oh, you bastard! I just shield use a mythic shield to deflect his attacks as it becomes. Son of a bitch! He comes at you. You just you put up your hand and push, push, push. Hits the shield all three times. Um, your turn, Jesse. You get another. You're you're you can feel like you're. You're slowly coming out of your consciousness, but even so, you feel your body burning. You can't, you can't understand why your entire body is burning. <laughs> He's why like his pain and suffering, John. He's a smart man. He knows why. <laughs> uh, TK, Tacitus. He's got me pinned against the wall. There's nothing that I can do. All that I can do is just, uh, actually, you know what I do do? I'm going to (laughs) cast Blade Ward, and then I attack him once. Blade Ward, attack once. I get a 19 to hit him. 19 hits. Slash him with Dewdrop. For 14 points of damage. (laughs) You see that you've started a big cut up his gut, but not enough to to free you. I look at and I'm like, bring me back you. into the world, Tori. I bring you back. I'm gonna deliver you like a like a, <laughs> like, like a hideous he, demonic rebirth. The <laughs> demonic rebirth. Barnabas, come back to us. Uh you uh, you you cut you cut him deeply, but he. He yells at you enraged and uh, spends this turn unloading on you. How dare you cut him? How dare you uh, injure him? And he is going to take all four of his attacks in quick succession on you. Oh, my God. He's got four attacks now. He's always had four attacks, but he's always used them in different ways. I think he hits twice. I, I think know. he gets an 18, a 20, a 20, and a... The two 20s hit. Okay, then that's all that hits. <sighs> I do have both of these damage rolls, fortunately, at least. Correct. So this one does 9 damage. 4. And this one does 18 damage. Oh, nine, he does nine points of damage, so I'm down to seven life. Oh my god, if I had not blade warded, I'd be so dead. <laughs> Alright, Jesse, roll your saving throw so I can finish off this motherfucker. Oh! All of this is close to that. He's one. Oh, of this Jones! You're one save Slowly away. Slowly getting that. digested. You, you actually are slowly waking up, and you you all of a sudden realize you're being digested. 
your your eyes open, but your consciousness hasn't fully awoken. You can feel <laughs> you can feel your body slowly being dissolved by the acid. I always knew uh, this is how it would end. Cassidus. Um. I have nothing left. I have no action surge. I have no second wind. All I can do is extra attack. Um. I'm going to extra attack. I have last one last lucky reroll. That's all that I can. That's the only thing that I have left unspent. Oh, oh, god. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that was awful. That was awful. It feels so bad. That was. <laughs> I keep my lucky reroll to try and fuck with uh, fuck with Wild on his <laughs> turn. You don't, you don't want to use your lucky reroll right now? I will. I will. I will. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you, Wild. Fuck you. Fuck you. I end my turn. Fuck. Jesse, you're not gonna. You're not gonna try to save him. I can. With what? You have I to do a saving throw, Jesse. No, uh, you, have, you have one more vision. Uh, do I need to be conscious to use that? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> What's your to hit, Tori? That's probably enough, huh? I can pour temp one of those into a 12. I have a plus 7. I'll pour temp one of those into a 12. I was going to use it to save my own life. Okay, no, it's fine. Save your own life with it. No, it's not going to be very useful if Tori's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Uh, you turn his roll into a 12? Yeah. It turns into a 19? Tori? Yeah. Roll he's, damage? He's in, away. he's in the bathroom. Oh, no. Can't you hear how loud he's peeing? No, yeah. I don't know that. Like I'm not a pee listener. In fact, I'm a secret peer. I refuse to pee loud enough for people to hear me. That is my general rule of thumb when being in a bathroom. Like if I, it's just, I hit the rim. You hit like the slide, and it hits the side, just, just swooshes in. Fear my stream of justice. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, Roll damage for uh, Um. What? I pour down what you're for into a twelve. Oh, so I hit him. Yeah. Against all odds, I hit him, and I do... <laughs> I do 14 points of damage. <laughs> Way to redeem yourself. I did redeem myself with your help, so I will not poo-poo your divinations ever again. <laughs> it, is, it has been seen, and you, you put your sword in the, in the seam of the... Um, the wound that you opened up on his chest, and you <laughs> carve him like a turkey, straight up, and and split a seam. His entire body opens up, and right in front of you, Barnabas is born again. From the, <laughs> the, the, the only question is whether or not I'm born dead. <laughs> <laughs> if this is a stillbirth. Or not. Uh, roll your fire roll. Oh! <laughs> no, I used my last reroll of the day. That was oh it. Oh my god. Failure. Bar oh. I, did, is Wild still alive? Oh, no. They both died. <laughs> Like, like holding and clutching his his guts as he's like almost like he's he's making it worse by not understanding that is that he's being split open and he's like, why, what is happening? Save me! Oh, oh my God! Here it flies from his body. <laughs> And I just kneel by Barnabas and I just scream, Barnabas! Just covered, covered in placenta and uh, viscera. And just, Barnabas! And I clutch him. Uh, I clutch him. We, the, the, scene, the scene has a shot that, 
that slowly zooms out, uh, and you see the the ship, you see the 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 carnage, you see the side of the ship, and the name of the ship is the Wandering Gnome. <laughs> And that's where we'll end our, 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 our game session today. Wow. Dang. That was, that was metal as fuck. I knew it would end this way. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> you foresaw this. <laughs> well, From the first step on this path, I always knew. <laughs> uh, so, let's... Let's uh, maybe talk about what uh, what options you guys have. Uh, he can... How much does True Resurrection cost? Oh, oh True Resurrection is not a hopeful option. Not His option. best hope is Raise Dead. The the only thing that we can have available to us would be to seek out those clerics that you spoke of, John, and ask them to do Raise Dead. Mm-hmm. I think Raise Dead itself is like a six level spell. No. He'd come back. He'd come back normal, just weaker, like Beric mm. Dundarian. Yeah. Mm. Beric Dundarian comes back weaker. He levels you one level, right? I, the other option is to roll another character. Right. <laughs> I, I like Barnabas. I like Barnabas too, but sometimes a character dies. <laughs> sometimes a character dies, and it's epic. <laughs> Um, okay, Raise Dead is fifth level. Yeah, Raise Dead is cost five hundred gold worth of a good yeah. thing. It's it's easily within the company's budget. Sarcha can just do a quick deduction from from our mm-hmm. account and uh, get you back on your. Has not been dead for no longer than ten days. So. Mhm. Mhm. And it doesn't it doesn't seem to. It doesn't. You don't seem to lose any levels for it. Oh really? Oh wow. You're there's right. no penalty now. There's. There used to be a death penalty. Coming back from the dead is an ordeal. The target takes a minus four penalty to all attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. Every time the target finishes a long rest, the penalty is reduced by one until it disappears. Oh okay. I like it. There is better. See now. So it's just that they have to be fresh. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, Interesting. Well, I like. Uh, I like. Everyone enjoyed the session today. It was, <laughs> it was good. It was, it was heartbreaking. Good. And gross. <laughs> it's my own fault if I if I rolled better. Yeah. I would still oh, be alive. Like, you know, you could have you could have saved it, and, <laughs> and like when and let Tori take damage the next turn, but he would have died. I guess but he would have died, and then we would jump. No, it was dead. totally like a a heroic death. You totally yeah. used your last bits of foresight to ensure victory over the monster, but at the cost of your own life. How no, uh, it was purely no, selfish. My own good. life would have been forfeit anyway. Oh my you, god! Knowing knowing that like that's what you saw this morning. You literally saw your death this morning and walked into it. <laughs> Well, I would have if I hadn't drugged myself into oblivion. <laughs> I probably didn't see the tail bit <laughs> because of that. Like this is this is too much. I gotta I gotta well, deaden this. Well, that was fun. That was uh, it was badass. The night terrors aren't normally this bad. I I need my medicine. <laughs> <laughs> he was a he was a poor, broken, shattered soul. He saw too much. And now, and now I'm gonna try and raise dead you, and probably bring you back to this horrible, horrible life. <laughs> Why would you do that to me? <laughs> I'm finally happy, Tori. <laughs> You're finally free of your your apocalyptic visions of the future. What are you talking about? He's having the worst apocalyptic version. He's literally living in the nine hells right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just eternally digesting. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, yeah, you were killed by a demon. I wonder if your soul is claimed by the abyss now. That'd well, uh, he didn't die inside of the thing's stomach. He literally True. was filled out onto the ground in front of me. Was rebirthed and died right there in front of me in my arms. Yeah. If, I think that you're going to come back with some, some sort of scarring. 
You've seen something on the other side. <laughs> what more have I seen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is all part of the process. This is part of your growth. This is this is our characters' journeys. Yeah. Acidus mm -hmm. is permanently traumatized by this, certainly. <laughs> so. Well, it's probably uh, just coming back stronger. I mean, this is not. This isn't gonna slow me down. <laughs> I was made for this kind of thing. So um, you guys, you guys took out two very deadly encounters uh, today. So you guys are rolling in the experience. Let me just say that. Um, do dead people get experience? <laughs> yeah. Do I get double experience since he's he's technically not alive? Right. I mean, right. technically, Tacitus right. soloed him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's find out. <laughs> How much experience points you guys all get? So you guys have Yeah, my experience point total is uh forty thousand and nine. Yeah, I'm at also I just I think Flattened it at 40,000. You have nine experience, Tori? Huh? I did that on purpose, <laughs> didn't I? You're just asking him to post you. <laughs> well, I'm amazed that they made Ray's dead no longer take a level. Yeah, well, it makes sense. It's a permanent change to your character sheet. What do you think does... No, it doesn't. Well, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess the thing is they're trying to eliminate de-leveling just because it's mechanically a pain in the ass. Yeah. To unlevel the character. <coughs> well, especially if, you, if you're the only one who gets killed and your whole rest, the whole rest of your friend, all of your friends are still, like, one level higher than you then after that point. I feel like that's actually not that big of a deal. It's not, really, but, uh... Uh, it's I, mean, I feel like maybe you, when I was in high school, I would have been like, oh, man, this sucks. But now it's like, I don't know, it doesn't really make a difference if it's all you're lower level. It's all part of the story now. But, <laughs> but I think mechanically it is smart because having to de-level a character sheet is, sucks balls. Agreed. And you're probably going to make mistakes. Oh, interesting. So I guess I was curious what true resurrection does, considering raised dead has been made stronger. Mm -hmm. You can you can resurrect any creature that died no no more than two hundred years ago, and the spell can provide a new body if the original doesn't exist. Right. Yeah, in case you get dissolved by acid or does that mean uh, disintegrated. He, does that mean you could just use it and get, like, an upgraded body then? Mm, no, it wouldn't necessarily be any better than the old body. It would like be, uh, redundant organs or something? <laughs> oh, like, dude, we should reincarnate me. None of us have reincarnate. That's a druid spot. You guys are at 40,000 right now? Oh, come on! Dude, 40, level up level up Sarsha to level 9 and have her learn reincarnate. <laughs> you, guys, you guys each get 20,150. Holy shit. Wow. 20,000? Yeah. And what? 20,150. That was stirring, is what that was. That was pretty great. That's that's for the the stone golem, the flying out, the role play in the beginning, the setting up a future kingdom, uh, finding your magic items, flying to the free the bandits, giving money to the poor village, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah. killing wild. Covered a lot of ground this session. You Every get when you take five hours to play. I just don't understand, like, two-hour play sessions. They're too short. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's another thing that I like about 5th edition, too, is it, I feel like the adventures move faster and more action takes place than in previous editions. 
Mm-hmm. Having having uh, two players that know exactly how the game works also speeds things up. I have to wait yeah. ten minutes for a turn to be like, "Well, what do you do?" I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hate long turns. It, it's nice having a small group and and also moving quickly. All right. Well, let's say goodbye to our viewers. Uh, yeah, we will sign off. We'll uh, we'll come back next session, hopefully next weekend. Should uh, I? Harden Harden has Sundays off. Okay, we should get John in on this. Yeah. This is what he told me. Uh, my schedule allows for... Um, next Sunday, I could be... I don't know if I could play very long next Sunday, but I can make it work. I'm on call. That means I could play around 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock of Sunday of next week? And that's if there's no shifts to cover or anything like that. All right. I'm going to be traveling, so I'm going to be back in Illinois next week, but I'm going to try and log on at my on my mom's internet and play from her house. I'm not going to be free next weekend because Margaret's mom is in town. Okay. Um, but I would be free on weeknights. Uh, well, we can see if we coordinate with John. My weeknights... Let me, let me just run down. Tomorrow I'm very busy. Um... Oh, I guess I could do Sunday night um, next. Sun- Sunday night doesn't work for me because I'll be visiting a friend. He's having a birthday, all that kind of stuff. I'll be in Illinois. It'll be hard to swing. Maybe two weeks from now. Yeah, I don't even have a schedule for that day yet. So mm. um, I could I could potentially do March 1st. Holy balls. We're level 9 now. Yes. Yes. You're level 9 and almost to level 10. Oh, really? Are we almost to level 10? That's insane. It, we're not far from level 10, yes. Wow. That was, that was my own fault. I re ended last session close to 9, I guess. Yeah, you would have you would have gotten 9 from... Well, probably not. You might have gotten like six thousand from the the golem, mm-hmm. and a couple thousand here and there for the the things along the way, and then because there are seven thugs, there's a multiplier for the the battle there. Just, Wait, does that does the multiplier also apply when you're awarding the XP? That's what I figure. Oh, I didn't realize that. That makes sense. I mean, you're. I don't know. I factored it in. Yeah, that makes sense. So, any case, um, that played out very well, and I feel like it, it gives us some good options for the next time. You're on a, on a boat. You have a boat now, and uh, and you've got a quest. <laughs> so, although I mean, if Sarsha just levels up, gets her fifth level spells, reincarnate, huh? What, what is this reincarnate? <laughs> You haven't looked at. Oh my God! Go read the text of reincarnate right now. Yeah. What what race do you want to be reincarnated as? You don't get to choose. <laughs> <laughs> you Which randomize one? what race you are. You just, you're just gonna see. <laughs> you just wake up as like a screaming halfling on the deck of the boat. <laughs> it's eating me! It's eating me! <laughs> That's so twisted. Oh, we're totally reincarnating you. Right? Yeah. 14. I'm a mountain dwarf. This is, I'm rolling. I'm rolling. She can do that, can't she? I think she yeah, can. Right. It's spell. a fifth level spell. I oh, my think, God. I Let's... think that she can and that we will start our next session with a conversation. With a conversation dictating the new race that Barnabas gets? Yes. The question is, do I lose... Like the benefit, I would lose the benefits of my previous race, right? So yeah, I'm going to lose your, my the benefits feet. of being human. What would I lose? Would I, I lose the language? Your feet. You'd lose one extra feet, one of your feet. I feel like you keep your feet. I mean, I'm... yeah, it seems weird to lose a feet, doesn't it? Changes its racial traits accordingly. So, I don't know. 
Yeah, I guess it's just awkward with human because... Or the DM chooses a form, so I could literally just choose that you choose a human. No, dude, if we're doing reincarnate, you... <laughs> that is all the fun of that spell, is being stuck with a totally random, <laughs> ridiculous race. You want me to roll? I'll roll right now. You definitely have to roll. There is no question. That is all the fun in that, is that spell. Is this, is, what, is this what's happening? You don't want to raise dead? I mean, we can raise dead with me. I, I take it Sarsha won't have it access to raise dead, right? Fifth level necromancy. No, she doesn't. It would have to be a cleric. Uh -huh. Or a paladin. Okay. Oh, we'll think about it. March 1st is what our tentative thing is right now. Okay. So, our viewers can join us March 1st for the continuing adventures of the Unholy Triad. The Unholy Triad. <laughs> All right. Plus, plus extra member Jesse and, and soon extra member John Harden. So on Holy Square is what it'll be. Um, it's really a like, much less for I think, it's just a, I just think it's an organization with a little little triangle. That's that's what it's all about. It could be the Holy Rhombus or something. Holy not Holy Rhombus. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Get out of here and. Uh, We'll see you guys next time. Yeah, I'll see you guys sometime. Jesse, whenever you get a chance to glance over Dark Heresy, we can yeah. uh, talk about a character. Yeah. yeah, I'll do some reading and think about what I want to make. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> see you guys next time. Okay, bye, guys. Later. <laughs>